I think I know the song now. <laughs> hey everyone, what's up? We are here live at Bat City ready to wind down our weekend. Hopefully you're going to wind down your weekend with us. Um, as usual, I am Small Press Shan and I am here with my incredible co-host of Back At It, uh, Wednesday Phil. How's it going, Phil? I am doing well. It's cold outside. It is. I don't. I don't enjoy cold. I don't either. And people keep talking of this uh, this winter storm coming again, and I hope that's not actually the case. Are we mm-hmm. Are we supposed to be gearing up for? They do say that we are probably going to get another one. They just haven't said. I mean, we don't know exactly when and for sure if, but like I know, like you know, meteorologists anticipate that we will get another one. Okay. So wow. I'm we'll not see. excited. How are you? Uh, good, good. It was actually a little bit warmer today, so I was excited about that, and then it, it went it went back into the cold. Um, I'm excited to have you you back today. Uh. Had everybody got to watch my speed speed read <laughs> version of the uh, live stream last week. I was like, I'm not going to do it without <laughs> Phil. I'm not going to do it. And then I was like, oh, my God, there's so many books, though, because it was, like, you know, a big time. And I was like, yeah, I got to, you know, I got I got to just go with it. Could so. you imagine a 30-minute show? Like if, this one being 30 minutes? I can't. I can't imagine. <laughs> uh, I know they're at home probably like, we could hope, <laughs> but you're not going to get it. <laughs> so no, it's not going to happen. No, because once again, we actually have two weeks of Diamond Comics again. So mm. two weeks of Indie, but it is think, it is January, so it is lighter solicitation yes. time. So two weeks is kind of really about the same as one week mm. usually is in the rest of the year. Um, so glad it wasn't like an overwhelming st- uh, stack of books, but we did actually have, uh, there was a delay in like the post New Year's books. And so they didn't get here until Tuesday this week. And then this week's books were delayed until Thursday. So it was like new books every day. It was confusing. I mean, it's exciting, you know, yeah. instead of getting it all at once, you kind of get a little bit here and there. Yeah. You know, break it up a little bit. I can, I can, I'm down for that. Yeah, and so it's, you know, most people were like, I'll just get the ones that came in on Thursday next week, and it'll be a surprise. So yeah. there's new books in your boxes if you didn't make it in <laughs> uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. Yes. Uh, but we are drinking, so Phil actually picked out this wine. It is San Gregorio, and it is a Tempranillo, and this is what we're using to wind down our weekend today. And it is, um, what does it say? It is non-irrigated Tempranillo from a low-yield vineyard, less than 3,000 kilograms per thing. And uh, it's bead-trained and about 35 years old on average. Uh, They are located um, very far away, it looks like. So I can't see. It's all in this fancy cursive font, which I can definitely read cursive, but it's also tiny, and there's no light on this side. So I'm like, let's see where it's at. Uh, There you go. Well, I can read. Tasting note, it's a sweet blackberry explosion on the nose, announces the arrival of this juicy and lively red, which has enough tannins to support the foolish body and make this rather food friendly. Mm. Uh, Drink now. So I guess I will. It says drink now mm-hmm. in the bottle. That's awesome. Yeah. That's uh, that's a solid way to wrap that one up. Because I'd be like, oh, okay. Okay, yeah. you're I, right. I, I like, need to drink, start drinking. Drink now. Okay. <laughs> so it worked. I drank it. It's delicious. So uh, we're going to be drinking San Gregorio all night tonight. Um, if you're drinking something exciting while you watch, let us know. Um, and for the record, I think strawberry milk is exciting. So whatever you're <laughs> drinking probably qualifies. <laughs> Dude, they don't make enough strawberry milk in this world. They shouldn't at all. Like, it's... it's they shouldn't make strawberry milk, period. No, strawberry milk is delicious. See that I quick, the know. quick mix strawberry Stop. milk. This is the jam. Stop. I know. I know. Oh, wait, you were getting booed. That's fine. Okay, but also, you have to remember, I can't have chocolate. <laughs> so, chocolate milk is out for me. So, flavored milk, you got the two options. You got strawberry, you got chocolate. I'm going to go with the one that's not going to kill me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So... I just don't understand milk in general. 
But we can save that for a whole. Mm, just, no, I'll I write a comic book about <laughs> right? Rachel for Milk. You should totally write a comic book about Rachel for Milk. Uh, we've got a bunch of hot new titles this week, so we're going to start there. Um, and then we'll tell you about some picks of the weeks. Some uh, local, we have a lot of local creators that we're going to spotlight in, uh, after our picks of the week today. And then um, some in stocks, some trades. So, uh, And there is a big prize at the end of the night. So stick around for a prize. Get those trivia fingers ready for the mm. end of the night. Um, all right, let's kick it off with some Aftershock. We've got Bylines in Blood. This is a new number one. Um, and this is this was really exciting for me because it kind of focuses around a girl who used to be a journalist and started, like, kind of got tired of how the, like, everything works in the media world. And she decided to become a private investigator. So she's got a little bit of, and she's got a little bit of that Jessica Jones, like, edge around her. But one day she shows up back at her house, or her office, which is her house. Uh, she shows up back at her office, and the daughter of her mentor, the person that she used to work in the newspaper industry for, like, that taught her everything, uh, is there. And she finds out that her mentor has been killed. And she, nobody is doing any thought. Like, the, the detectives on the case are the ones that she thinks are the worst detectives. And so she's on her own case to kind of figure out what could have happened to her mentor. And he, at that point, had gone on to, he had left the mainstream media and had started his own newspaper and was kind of actually uprooting all of the corruption that's going on in politics and in the media so there's a lot of targets that are a lot of people that could have targeted him and uh, the thing might be like we're led to believe there might be a little bit of a paranormal thing to it but mm -hmm. I think that it's going to end up being something more related to this like advanced technology or like some kind of big corporation doing something but I don't know and it's super uh, super, super crazy. The art um, in this book is wonderful. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see what they do. You know, it's Aftershock, so we see four or five issues from them, and then uh, it either ends or they discuss the idea of a volume two um, at the end of it. So I don't know if this is going to be one that ends up going in some weird, crazy direction and we see a second volume, but it could be a really solid miniseries. It probably, like, I could see it being just five issues and not needing anything else because I just really want to see her solve this mystery. That's what we usually always want mm -hmm. <laughs> by the end is answer all the questions because if you leave me with any more... You're going to have to give me a volume two yes. and you don't want to do that. You yeah. don't. And Aftershock, I guess, doesn't really want to be doing that as much as possible so uh, I think the art looks great this was the one that sat right at the top of the pile that I didn't get to um, but it's Aftershock so obviously I'm gonna have to sit down and read it because they usually don't disappoint no they have some pretty solid books and I feel like they're on an upward climb with that right now I would agree um, we were we were actually talking about it just last night Matt and I were talking about some books and we were talking about how uh, you know there was a point where when Aftershock was just doing like kind of doing these mini series, a lot of times like those four or five issues, you know, you had your big information dump in issue one and then kind of a little bit of story in issue two and then suddenly it just ended in that fourth or fifth issue and you yeah. were like, wait, there was something else like, I just got excited about it <laughs> yeah. and now you're ending it yeah. and they weren't going back to these mini series. Now we're starting to see a lot more of coming, volume two coming soon mm -hmm. from them. We're also starting to see, we're still seeing that information dump in issue one but they're fleshing out and giving more room within those other three to five, three to four issues where they're actually starting to get character development. I think it is because they're starting to give room for those volume twos. So right. the, the writers are feeling like they have more to say and more room to do it. Uh, Chad said Va uh, Van Jensen wrote Green Lantern Court a while back, which Vin uh, Van Jensen is on that book right there, on Bylines by Blood. Oh, okay. Um, and it's been a while since he's been on a book, and so Chad is looking forward to Bylines in Blood. Um, I will double check to make sure that I gave you Bylines in Blood, Chad. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did, but just to double check. Uh, that's not the name of that book at all. Uh, cool. <laughs> Speaking of Aftershock and starting with information dumps, uh, Cross to Bear issue 3 came out this week. Mm. This is one... Um, this is one that definitely, in the first issue, I was like, oh, that is a lot of information, oh. way too fast for me. Yes. Um, it is a 
it starts as a two-fold story. Like, we've got the one young guy who's a member of the Knights Templar in England during Jack the Ripper. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the old guy who is kind of his mentor who has moved on from the Knights Templar and is living in the Old West. And the young guy is sent to find, you know, to follow this thread of Jack the Ripper that leads him to the Wild West. And he goes to his old mentor and is like, hey, you get that typical scene of, hey, I know you're out of the game, but the game's <laughs> not out of you. Yeah. Like, we need you, buddy. And he comes... You know, and we got so much. Like, I was like, I think I know the entire history of the Knights Templar after issue one. And uh, it has yet to actually come into play in any way, shape, or form, really, in the story, other than the idea of once you're in, you're in. Right, which was kind of why I liked it after issue two mm -hmm. was, oh, cool, now that I've had all this information and it's a little overwhelming, now it's kind of switched to this, like, typical Western revenge story. Yeah. And I was fully on board, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, wait a second. Yeah. I kind of want to go this other route. Where's this Jack the Ripper character? Um, and I think eventually we'll get to that. But, again, if this is only going to be... I think it's four for volume one. Oh, I think no. it actually says at the end of this one that it's, like, volume one to be concluded in the next issue. I think that that was the book that I read that had that in there this week. And I was the same way. Like, after issue two, I was like, oh, wow, we've had monstrous character growth in issue two. Like, yes. we saw a million things happen, and each of the characters had something. And we get more of that in issue three. And we are on this revenge mission, and I still, I don't really know how it's going to connect, and now I'm, I keep asking the same question. I'm like, where's, where's the Jack the Ripper story going to right. fall into this, and where is the Knights Templar order going to come back into this? Because right now, we've got these two guys, and we're learning a lot more about their relationship in issue yeah. three. So it's like, well, now that we know more about their connection and their connection to the order... Are we going to fall? Is issue four going to send us back into that? And also, how are you going to wrap up this Jack the Ripper thing so fast? Yeah, there's. I, it feels like there's no way that can be done no. in one or even two issues. I feel like you can't give me everything I'm going to need. So I feel like there has to be a volume two. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really going to determine whether or not I care to go beyond this. Yeah. You know, because if it does wrap up in issue four, then you either have to lift, leave it on a cliffhanger or give me like a little uh, Knights Templar tease at yeah. the end, and then I'll stick around for volume two. But if you don't do that, I'm a little nervous. Which, if I was doing it, I would, and, and I only had one more issue left, I would definitely go in the direction of okay, this last issue, we're gonna wrap up like this personal revenge story, and then at the end, like, the order, somebody from the order would show up and be like, what's, yeah. what's going on? And, like, now they're all drawn back into this order mess and they're dealing with that. And so, and then we go back to, because it's like the Jack the Ripper situation is basically just to pull him to have a reason to run into this person again. Yes. So it's like, okay, well, now we got to do this story. And then now that we've done this story, let's go back and here we are. So I hope that they wrap up this story and then, you know, the, like, mid credit scene is the Templar yes. showing yeah. up or something. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping for because I'm definitely intrigued. I'm, kind, you know, maybe this is a bit of the pre-quest to the quest. Yeah. Like, oh, we just want to show you what they're capable of, mm -hmm. you know, so you are invested because I am. I'm, I'm definitely invested in the characters by this point. Yeah. Um, and I want to know what happens to them and and what they're gonna and especially like knowing more about their relationship with each other. It definitely changed the entire dynamic of the story. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see where that goes. Um, up next is Omega, which this is issue one of four, and it's from Cutaway Comics. Interesting. And uh, this was, I had no idea what I ordered. Uh, it's okay. one of those situations. Okay. I was like, oh, what is this? And it's an interesting, can I actually mm -hmm. steal it really mm -hmm. fast? Because it's got some really cool, like, characters and art. And I was trying to see if there was, um, there was something about it specifically that, like, this page, like, just the way that, like, first of all, they've got the black gutters, which I talk about all the time loving. But this is 
a planet where we've given all of, you know, we they started to believe in gods. They didn't believe in God before. Um, and they started to believe in gods. And, and the people over the course of millennia realized that that wasn't good for them and it wasn't helping them in any way so they started kind of rebelling against it and there is one member of the original royal family left uh this young girl and that royal family is the one that ushered in this time of gods and so she has been exiled and now these people are trying to the rebellious ones are trying to wake up this demon and bring it in and uh she's like hey that's a really stupid idea I've got to go back and talk these people out of this um, and it kind of goes from there I actually just read that top line right yeah, there I was right now ask you. <laughs> it actually says it's from a, a connected to Doctor Who it's coming out of Doctor Who and I don't know if that's from I don't recognize this world so I'm guessing it might be something from the new newest okay. couple seasons because I'm a couple seasons behind on Doctor Who um, when it went to like HBO and you had to pay for it, right. I fell behind. Um, or, but so I'm curious to see like where the story goes. It's a four part ish series, and obviously in some way it connects to. It came from that world, so like, are we gonna see anything with the Doctor? I don't know because Titan owns the Titan Comics owns the Doctor Who stuff. So I don't know if it would actually like come in if it's just somebody was like, I really like these characters. Can mm-hmm. I have these characters to make a story of? Um, you don't have to obviously know anything about Doctor Who to read it, because I didn't know it was from the pages of, Do- like, the show Doctor, like, yeah. connected to Doctor Who at all um, while reading it. It was definitely just one of those, like, <laughs> we've messed up, I'm going to try to save you. And she has really cool, like, Fire Phoenix um, drone. But it also, like, help, like, can, she can communicate to p- through people. And it's kind of like a fox from Harry Potter. Um, but it's a drone. And so it's like it can help okay. her. Like, it does magical stuff for her. But it's it's all science-based and drone-esque. And it's super cool. I think that was kind of what pushed me away from reading it. As I saw it was tied to Doctor Who. And I'm still in season <coughs> one. Yeah. So I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't read this just in case. No connecting point at all as of now. If it does circle back to Doctor Who at some point, I would, we'll see how it does. But I think it's one of those where it doesn't really matter hmm. um, at all because I've seen everything but the last, like, three seasons of Doctor Who, and I don't recognize this okay. from there at all. So, And there was no specific Doctor Who references. Weird. Um, Dirtbag Rapture, issue four from Oni Press. Uh, yes. Go for it. This book is a clusterfuck of wonderful things, including um, the main character, who is a, a bit of a dirtbag. Yeah, I would bit. say. Uh, loves drugs and houses ghosts as they are trying to pass on to the afterlife. And she's kind of gotten caught in this battle between heaven and hell. Mm-hmm. Supposedly the apocalypse is coming. Um, and in this issue, she has decided to team up with the angels. Because last issue, she teamed up with the demons and, and thought, this is a bad idea. Yes. So now she's trying Team Angel to see if they're a better choice. Yes. And so this kind of continues on her quest of trying to figure out everything. Also, the last issue left on a really interesting cliffhanger mm-hmm. with what she discovered in her mindscape. Um, and this issue, I, I think, is wonderful. I'm going to be honest. I, it's one of those books that every time a new issue comes out, I think, okay, at some point, I feel like this book is going to fall off. Yeah. Um, and it hasn't yet. And it hasn't. And it keeps getting better. She has, uh, the guy with the eye patch mm-hmm. is great. Uh, he, rem- he reminds me of, like, a Venture Brothers character in the way that he acts with his conspiracy theories and... Um, just kind of like his, he kind of, he's like that guy who thinks he's military, yeah, but he's not, you know, he yeah. just, he thinks he is. <laughs> he thinks he is. It's, it's really funny cause she's got the weirdest like ragtag friends. Mm-hmm. Cause like she's the stoner. That's all she wants to do is get high. Then she, ha- but she has the ability to control ghosts and get them places. And so now angels and demons are fighting over her. And then you've got the guy with the eye patch, one of her best friends who is the doomsday prepper, but That's not right. like. Like Phil said, he kind of thinks he's military, but he's not. So his doomsday prepping is just yeah. kind of like all over yeah. the place. And then you've got the girl that thinks she's from another dimension. Mm-hmm. And then you've got 
the like the, witch. the yeah, but like the like the internet witch. Like yeah. she follows yeah. like what she sees is trendy on like oh I saw that people are doing this with witchcraft now. So that's like her thing and then she's like, Oh, I can make spells because this magically disappeared like around me and it's like, Well, no, uh like it's you know, the angels actually like just decided to not fight you in this moment yeah. because they're angels and they'll destroy you and she's like, I have magic yeah. I like, can't wait to tell my coven. Yeah, it's and like, so it's, it's it's a group of people who are just all uh over the place and uh we absolutely love seeing this we talk about lovable losers all the time and this is yeah. definitely like a whole group of like if the goonies grew up and they <laughs> yeah. didn't change yeah. their personality types when they got to their like mid 20s early 30s uh this is kind of what you would see they have would have become yeah that's actually <laughs> pretty legit there um yeah, I would agree. If you're a fan of the Goonies and you want to know what they would have been like if they grew up. If Mikey was smoking weed instead of using his inhaler, yes. <laughs> where would that have gone? Yeah, and I, I think this book just continues to get more and more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, as the page, I think, right before this, where there's the angel ripping the ghost apart. It's crazy. Yeah. And where they leave off in this issue just makes me even more excited to continue on uh, in terms of uh, a big reveal. Yeah, and nobody's good. Nobody's no, good. Nobody's no. bad. It's this whole idea of, like, you know, we're all just here mm -hmm. and make a better choice in the moment uh, than you would have made the last, than you made the last time. Yes. And that's essentially all they're going for. Yeah. Hey, let's try and clean up your mess, but you're going to have a hard time doing it yeah. more than likely. And yeah, <clears throat> love it. Um, but yes, I don't want to go any further than that because I do really like the reveal in mm -hmm. the end. And if you're not picking this book up, you're missing out. You should. And it's starting to sell out a lot. That's issue four. Yeah, of, issue four. Um, and uh, Derby Rapture is definitely starting to sell faster each week nice. when we get it in. Like, each of the, like, month that it comes out, it's selling faster and faster. So uh, I definitely recommend. Like, that's actually the last copy of it that we have in stock. And I, it was in the back for us to read. So, <laughs> like, it probably would have sold had it been out. Um, Chad said he's just happy to be regular re regularly reading something from Oni Press. Um, again, which I agree. I think there's some really, really cool stuff that Oni Press puts out, but a lot of times we're seeing it in just come straight graphic novel. It's yes. a lot of uh, original graphic novels, so it's nice to see some single issue um, Oni Press. And uh, Dan just joined us. Hey, Dan, what's up? We are going to be talking about oh, some hello, stuff Dan. later. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Um, very excited. Yeah, feels very excited. Uh, Buckhead issue two. This is from Boombox, which is our teen imprint from Boom Studios. Um, we like to bring that up. There's Boom Kaboom, which is kid, and then there's Boombox, which is like the YA teen level, and then there is of course Boom Studios. Uh, Buckhead is all about these. This kid whose parents are scientists and explorers, and they go out at one point pre his like birth really or like when he's very young to try to find something and dad ends up going missing i guess it's like right after he's born right. and the dad goes missing and he's been trying like they've been trying to find the dad uh for a while now and him and his mom just moved to a new town and it's very like stepford wives uh what is it disturbing behavior where all the teenagers <laughs> yeah. were like turning yeah. into stuff oh, like, yeah. very like a a, a like younger young like a middle grade yeah. version of uh, <laughs> disturbing behavior almost because all of the kids and the, the adults in the town have these weird tattoos and anybody who has a tattoo like you can't really trust them and our poor main character just moved here so he's trying to figure all this out and in the process discovers a video game which may actually lead him to figuring out what happened to his dad yes yeah, it's a it's a video game that is tied to all this ancient culture. So there's a little bit of kind of like that historical mm -hmm. magic paranormal side to it. Um, but I I have to say though I don't know if it's because it's it's a YA book, uh, but this book moves at a very fast pace for me, where I'm just like wait hold on I need to process that. But it's more information. And him and his friend are kind of mm -hmm. moving very quickly through this story. 
Um, and I think that might be because it's a, a mini series, and they're yeah. trying to put a lot in really quickly. Because I believe it's only going to be five issues. Yeah, I think that's why the the hearts, hearts are that, each yeah. one like the the life life hearts, yeah. the health hearts, yeah. um, count it down. And so I think it's only five issues, and and so yeah, it's like things move very quickly. Like the sec, like you pick up right where you left off at the mm -hmm. end of the last issue, but then things accelerate quickly yeah. and it's like he just moved here and he's already very far into the depths <laughs> of this situation it's like two days into his adventure and he's already like unraveled what is happening and how he's got to do it um but I, at the same time i really like the art in this book and i do like the story i like the universe i like all of the stuff that i'm getting even though it is very fast paced i'm still like i'm really enjoying this ride yeah um, I love the main character. I think he's great. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to continue with this, even though I kind of have to slow down and really process everything little by little. Um, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. It's a really great book. Absolutely. Um, and that's only issue two, so there's still yeah. plenty of time to jump in. And honestly, like... A lot of people, when they see the boombox, a lot of the... Because we'll put the boombox titles on the main wall, and a lot of adults are like, oh, but isn't that the kid version? And it's it's not necessarily like Spectre and Spectre's had some really scary moments. Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to grab some of these boombox uh, to grab all of the boombox titles because they end up being some of the best things that Boom puts out. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, I missed it," and because I did, I didn't know that's what that was about. Yeah. So grab a boombox title, sit on the couch and read it, and kind of see where it, where it goes and see if it's something you're interested in. Because um, just because it has the boombox title. Uh, or imprint label doesn't necessarily mean it's not for you. Yeah. Also, we were talking about the hearts on the back. So in the first issue, there was only one of five lit up. Now there's two. So we're assuming that each issue is going to be a, another life heart. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Apache Delivery Service. This is from, is it Dark Horse? It is. Uh, yeah. Yes, it and is Dark Horse. And it's Matt Kent. Um, and this. Fantastic. <laughs> it's a. Historical fiction, one. which we like, yeah, first yeah issue. issue one, and this is kind of a historical fiction book that we um, we don't see a lot. Like we're starting to see more, I feel like, in the genre of historical fiction. But this takes place in the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. um, do you have? I know you're a big Matt Kent fan, so I yes, I do like Matt Kent. Um, I'm also somebody who enjoys the Vietnam setting mm -hmm. um, for a war that we should not have been a part of. It's a very interesting war. Um, and I like the character that they give us for this story in particular mm -hmm. um, and the artwork on this book which is Tyler Jenkins I feel like I've seen this art somewhere else more mm -hmm. recently and I cannot figure out where that would be um, but this book it's it is so good yeah this book led me down a rabbit hole conversation today <laughs> oh at the gosh. store because I was talking about how um, one of the things that I, I love that this book does is they keep calling him, the main character Apache and yeah. he's like I'm, I'm actually that's that's not my tribe at all yeah, yeah. and um, we kind of started talking in the store today about how I love that comics are using this historical fiction specifically genre as a way to not only talk about things like the Vietnam War and kind of give us more insight into that but also to to have those conversations of hey we've been we've been misrepresenting a lot of things and i ended up talking to the people about just even you know the other history of the dc universe going back in dc saying hey we messed up mm -hmm. for the last you know we've been around for 80 years and there's a lot of times that you know, we pushed aside minority characters or we misrepresented minority characters and we're going to own that and we're going to show you how we could have done better and we're gonna call ourselves out for the bad like the bad job we did in those places. And so I like that comics are like, Hey, here's some times where we've done that in history. Let's fix it. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that even in like good Asian being historical fiction about what it was like to be a detective and be Asian in the 1930s in America. And right. we're seeing that we get those history lessons at the back of each book about actual Asian culture in the 1930s in America. And I, I love that comics give us a chance to explore that and then tell these, st these stories that weren't getting told before. Yes. And the great thing is, is you're surrounding this with all of the tropes that I need. 
Um, we're gonna have there's a, a killer that's going around mm-hmm. the jungle and um, kind of decapitating bodies yeah. and putting them on pitchforks and you know kind of setting them up to scare the soldiers. Uh, but they're also gonna be hunting for Nazi gold, which yeah. Who doesn't love a good story where people go and hunt the cursed Nazi gold? Um, so I feel like this book is going to have everything. And it's Matt Kent, who I always blindly trust the moment he puts a new book out. Um, and, you know, like you said, I think we're going to get a chance to kind of... It's going to touch on it a lot, I think, throughout mm-hmm. this book. Um, kind of the nasty way that we handled that stuff in that time period. Um, cause there was a lot of racism in the Vietnam war. Yeah, absolutely. On like within our own ranks. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to get a mixture of that, um, with some really interesting stuff as well. And it's dark horse. Um, yeah. you know, they, what is it called? Apache delivery service. Apache delivery. I know. I saw you trying to, to read the title <laughs> from fire? back there. Yeah. Uh, Apache delivery service. And yeah, it's right there. Real small. Yeah, it's a real small title because it's kind of like in his like badge, like or like what would have been stamped on the mm-hmm. the bombs back then. Yeah. So. But yeah. And I, the back cover. Can you show them the back yes. cover? Because if this doesn't tell you like where this like the kind of book that you're getting into, like you're it's it's gonna be an intense read for sure. It's gonna get dark. Mm-hmm. It's gonna get intense. Yeah. But I think it's gonna be well worth it. And if you're a fan of war books or historical fiction at all, like this mm-hmm. is gonna be one of those that you're gonna need to read like week, month by month as it comes out because it's gonna be strongly strongly done. And yes. And the thing with Dark Horse is they go from single issues to hardcover to trade. Mm-hmm. So it can take you like a year before you see a trade paperback. So if it's something you're interested for Dark Horse, I always recommend getting those single issues because there's no guarantee that you'll get a trade paperback and if you do it's going to be a year away from the last issue mm-hmm. a lot of the time um hell cop yes. issue three from image comics this is on the shadow line yeah. yeah so this is on the shadow line imprint uh this was one of those books that in the first issue i was a little uncertain about uh, I think it's a combination of the art and what it was setting up. Because mm-hmm. in the first issue, it's it's a, hey, this guy was framed for murdering his partner. You know, the yeah. typical story. Now he's got to go and solve who did it to, you know, clear up his name. Um, but the really cool thing about this book is that it lives in a world where we're slowly starting to explore interdimensional travel. Yes. And one of the dimensions that we're able to travel to is hell. Yes. So it's its own actual dimension. And it's kind of cool because it's very much of like a, um, like a deserty landscape, which is kind of, I think, what some people would kind of maybe expect hell to be. Um, but this is the, that book that where I'm, I don't think I really care so much if he solves Mm-mm. this mystery because I just want them to expand this universe out for as much as humanly possible before they answer any questions. I feel like that's also what they want based off of one line in this issue because the main character's name is Virgil. Yes. And they go, oh fitting name for a hell cop yeah and so it's like "Ooh, are we gonna go through all seven circles of hell is that what we're doing <laughs> did you just explain it to us with one line of dialogue because i really hope that's what we're getting because it does feel like like he's trying to he's pulled a politician off the mm-hmm. train to hell and there is like this monorail that runs through hell which that makes usually a circle so it makes you think like yes we are gonna get these And the, like, levels of hell that we're going to be going through. And, um, you know, they talked about, like, the different rivers and stuff like that in this issue. So I feel like we're going to see a lot more of what hell looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, And honestly, more so than Virgil, I'm more interested in the person back home who's helping him. Yes. Who is another one of his partners. um, And she is helping him by sabotaging the people who are chasing after him. Who think, because he has been, you know accused of this murder so he's supposed to be under arrest and she has a friend back home who is sabotaging the cops the regular cops ability to arrest him 
um, over and over again. And I love how she's constantly like, oh, I guess I'm just a dumb girl and I can't <laughs> yeah. figure it out. But she's like the most genius scientist mm-hmm. in the world. And she's like, I can't figure this out. And even when they like bring in other people and they're like, we're going to have somebody help you. And she's like, oh, good, because I'm just struggling so hard. Yeah. And it's like it's almost like the, the Spider Woman cartoon mm-hmm. where she where they'd always be like, oh, Aunt Jessica, you'll never figure that out. And she's like, no, I won't. And like winks at the camera like this girl is like in that mode and I love it so much like she's she's actually the character that I am enjoying uh, seeing her like side antics a lot of more yeah. than, almost more than his and what would be great is if they take the time to have both of them go on their an- to have their mm-hmm. antics go on their quests and then you know 18 issues from now bring them together yeah as we start building towards the final arc like I- i'm willing to sit down and invest in this book yeah fully expanding out its universe um because it's already it kind of gives me like dune vibes like when i read dune i want to explore that world so when they started putting out the new dune series like house of atreides mm-hmm. and the new one it's like I really want to know more about this universe. When this one came up, I was like, hell cop, okay. Like, yeah. sure, you know, BRPD, we've been there before. Mm-hmm. And I, like, I was like, that's not really original. And the covers were are kind of ridiculous at times. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, this is one of those, like, not made for me comics like your ad like there is one of the covers for this <laughs> issue is the recreation of a playboy magazine mm-hmm. and i was like i i don't know what you're what you're selling to me at this point with this comic because you're kind of all over the place like sometimes you look really sci-fi sometimes you look really fantasy sometimes right. you look like you're one of those magazines that's gonna like those comics that's gonna be just like for dudes who want to collect covers mm-hmm. i don't know what you're selling me based on the covers and so i didn't read issue one the first week, and I think you read it, and you talked about it, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. So when issue two came out, I read both of them. And I was like, this isn't what this book is advertising <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah. Like, you, you're you giving me a completely different story than what you, you've you advertised, and uh, so this is one of those where you definitely can't judge the book by the cover, because no. the cover has not told you anything. <clears throat> um and you're getting, like, you get the coolest gadgets, you get a really cool world. Like, honestly and truthfully, if they novelized this or turned it into, like, a Netflix yeah. show in mm-hmm. the future, this would be a very popular property, I think, if it keeps yes. going the way it's going. <clears throat> yeah. 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 I, this is, it's been a surprising book, and I will continue to read it, even though every issue I'm like, do I like this art? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Do I like it or because I, I cannot tell I can't if the tell. art is good or not? I can't tell at all, and I think it has it has those black colors. Yes, and that's a big thing right now that uh, comic creators are doing is they're using that because they do digitize their coloring, mm-hmm. and so a lot of times like they lose that they drop that one background in or that one color here or there, and they don't do and it, it just comes out looking flat. And I think that that might be the problem is it has that flat coloring and it takes away from what the inking and the pen- and the penciling yeah. had, have done. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I'm curious because the story is really good. And that's why I think, like I said, if it was novelized, uh, I think yeah. it would have a really big fandom because as a, as a story with just the description of the gadgets and things like that would be a really cool story. Mm-hmm. Um, a thing called truth. Speaking of hijinks, also image. Also image. Uh, this is issue three. Yes. Okay, issue three, and this is here or there, and they don't. Two random people. Just- um, <laughs> two. I know. Hello. <laughs> uh, this is two random people who have been forced together on an adventure across Europe. Um, we've got a doctor who lost her job, and was forced out by people from Big Pharma who wanted to steal her research and uh, claim it as their own because she wanted to use it to help the world and they wanted to use it to make money. And one day while she's asleep in her car, a another person who they just want to go on an adventure because their brother has passed and they are trying to live out their brother's dreams, steals the doctor's car. Yes. And now the doctor and them are on this adventure. Uh across Europe recreating classic movie scenes yes which we yes. just started in issue three mm-hmm. creating the movie scenes for real and I was like I know which movie this is and they don't tell you which is great yeah 
because you have these moments and you know like they get the they do the Vespa through Rome mm -hmm. and uh, like Roman holiday and they she they recreate <laughs> the <laughs> speech from Gladiator yeah. in the middle of the Colosseum like uh, and so it's, it's fun because you you know if you have watched pop culture like you've kept up with pop culture at any point in time there's going to be a movie moment for you in this yes and it's it's a lot of fun to kind of see when those moments pop up and like oh i know this one or like ooh, what is that and you kind of want to go look it up if you don't know it um right. but you're also experiencing this really fun like buddy film through a through a comic book yeah it's like your typical buddy road trip like hey this we have to go on this adventure and we have to do it for whatever reason and I like the reasoning. I think it's great. I love both of these characters. Mm -hmm. The the gladiator scene is really that's what did it for me is when she started quoting that gladiator yeah. speech because I heard that so many times as a kid with my dad watching that movie. Um, and in that moment, I was like, oh my god, okay, this is it. The, the this is the point in this series where I'm fully invested. One hundred percent. I'm down for this. I like where it's going, the the bit towards the end where oh you're like, gosh, oh, yeah. whoa, okay. There's a lot of, they just like those kinds of movies and those kinds of stories, there's this uh, moment of realization and this heart that comes into it. And like I talk about the, this creator all the time, uh, Yolanda, she did, they did um, uh, Alice in Leatherland mm -hmm. and... I just the we the way that they work this incredible amount of heart into everything that they tell and every story that they do and this one is the same thing you're you're going along you're having this happy moment and then it's like hey by the way this is also emotional yes. and you're gonna feel something uh, every time you read this book one way or the other and yes. I love it I laugh I cry you know f like the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, this has definitely been a fun series um, and I kind of like that the doctor's letting her hair down a little, mm -hmm. living life a little. So it's gonna it's gonna be one of those where both characters come out on the end with a lot of personal growth. It's gonna feel good. Yeah. It, it's you may cry, you may do some crying, uh, you're gonna laugh, you're gonna say, "Oh, I love that movie scene." Yeah, you're um, gonna do it. You're gonna find it. There's yeah. gonna be a movie for you. Yes. Like whatever genre of movie you like, we've already hit three, and it's gonna be great. Uh, AWA Upshot has a new number one. Uh, this is the fourth man, and once again, a detective story. We are hot on the detective books and comics right now. And this is a four, like, there's four issues of this, and it's because these detectives come in and four people have been killed, and each issue is going to focus on one of the bodies that Ooh, is in this. Okay in in the morgue so like the first issue is the first guy and that's all it is it just goes through the main uh, the first guy in the story like they're like oh this is the first body and all we talk about is that body and we go back and we see that person's story okay so it's not actually like solving the mystery at all at the moment like it's like starts with them and they're like well what do we know about this guy and then it goes back and we see his story and then it's like, okay, what do we got next? And that's kind of like we're in. So, you know, the next issue is going to show us the second person. So we are the detectives, essentially, because okay. we're seeing their story. And we're supposed to be looking for those clues um, because we aren't seeing the detective work at all yet. We just know we're looking at body number one. We hear the story, and you're, like, sitting there, like, should I be writing this down? Like, you're, like, in the the room when it happens. You're, like, oh, man, like, I better, oh, well, he talked to that person, and that mm, that person looks like they have motive. Like, you're, like, trying to figure it out because the detectives aren't doing any of that in the story. And so it leaves you as the person, like, you're playing Clue, essentially, and you're, like, okay, well, it could be this person because this and this. And so I love the way this played out. Um, I also love that the variant cover features a wacky, wavy, flaily arm guy. Um, that's not it. That's the oh. that's the pancake one. But I think I assume this takes place in a Waffle House. No, <laughs> but what? see, wacky, wavy, flaily arm guy is on the variant cover. You know the yeah. Uh, oh, you no, know the it's one. on the back issue yeah. right here. Uh, I thought that was a cool choice for variant cover because we are we do see a. Uh, a car dealership that does play into it okay. and so uh this is just 
um, a really, really great, uh, fun thing where you actually get to do the work. So, uh, BJ just said, speaking of image, when is Saga coming back? Saga comes back at the end of the month and, uh, like at the, the very end of the month, like the 29th, we'll talk about whether or not they're, depending on where uh, Austin is at the time, whether or not there can be any kind of like release or special for Saga. Um, and I think I'm going to do a read through of Saga. Um, don't know. Some of you, BJ being one of them, know from doing our book club, I've never read all of Saga. What? I am literally small press Shan and oh I've actually gosh. only ever read, like we read, I read it for, I tried to read issue one once. And I did not enjoy it. And then we did, I know, you can you can be, like, shocked. Um, and then, and that was years ago. And then we did the book club. When we were doing the $1 book club, we were, Saga was the one that everybody chose. And I was like, you know what? I'm really excited because we always have these great literary discussions. I want to talk about Saga. And so we had done, we had just done The Boys right before that. And I do not enjoy issue one of The Boys. I do not enjoy issue anything of The Boys. It's <laughs> not fair. my book. Um, and so, uh we actually, and then we came immediately into Saga, and we had some really great conversations, and I'm not going to spend all the time talking about them for this today. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm going to read more of Saga. And then I read, like, a couple more issues out of issue trade one, never finish it. And so now I'm going to do a complete 1 through 54 uh, read through between now and the time Saga comes out, and I'm going to document it all on the Internet. <laughs> Um, of my uh, read through of Saga and what I learn uh, and what I enjoy and all of the questions I have um, as I'm reading Saga issues 1 through 54. We actually got, we just ordered a new copy of the compendium and Ooh. one of them came in completely damaged and I was nice. like, perfect! Yes. I'm going to read all of Saga. Here we go. So, um, expect to see um, videos and tweets of me trying to figure out what the hell is happening in Saga as I read through it. So, you're going to wear a t-shirt. Uh, coming, coming soon to the internet near you. Um, Frontiersman, issue four. Speaking of going back to image. Um, Frontiersman, issue four. This is... Uh, I always say it's like if Nick Offerman was a superhero. Like, just literally Nick Offerman was a superhero. He is uh, an old man whose superpower when he was a superhero was saving the environment. And he decided to get out of the superhero business, so now he lives off the grid. And a bunch of protesters find out that an ancient, like an old, old giant tree is going to be cut down. And they're going to cut down this whole forest in the end to make room for big, big tech corporations to come in. So they come to him and they say, you can't retire, you got to come back, you got to uh, save save the world one tree at a time and he has been living in a tree since issue one as a part of protest and it's the first time in like 30 years or so that he's been out in the public so every other superhero in this universe or villain is now coming to this tree to either have like to have it out with him in some way or another so we've had villains come up who have been like we never finished our epic battle to the death and i want to finish it right now which just happened in the last issue, so now he's possibly on trial for murder while he's in this tree. Oh, okay. Um, and then, like, his long-lost super villain love has now also come back. Um, and so this is, this is what it looks like to retire from superheroism, but still try to be, like, a decent human, uh, and it blows up in your face. <laughs> That's all I asked for. Yeah. Try to be decent and then watch it blow up in your face. Uh, this is one of those books where I really, really like the artwork on it, um, and I don't think I was... I think you talked about it when the first issue came out, maybe, um, but I, I I somehow missed it. I somehow got lost in all the other books, um, so I'm hoping this is a 9.99 uh, yeah, image Mr. first, uh, volume one, um, because it's definitely one that I do want to read uh, at some point, because, I mean, you sold me on the whole Nick Offerman as a superhero. You guys, if you're fans of Ron, Ron Swanson or Nick Offerman as a human, which is really the same thing, yeah. you should uh, read this book. And it's from Image. It's fun. You pick it up. And uh, this, this, his love interest is like a Giganta and Wonder Woman mixed yeah, together. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I like the uh, the full page spread when you pull the, the cover out. 
There's, they show some of their past relationship, and it Sweet. gets gets some spice in there. Hey. Uh, the Blue Flame from Vault. So this is actually came out last week, technically. Um, I think. Six. Yeah, issue six. Because Diamond, again, we said this at the beginning, Diamond was delayed. So last week and this week came out at the same time, essentially. Uh, this is, Vault calls this, like, their version of Watchmen. And it's oh, a right. very like good comparison. And usually, when people compare things to Watchmen, I'm like, you should probably stop right now. Like, you're it's, it's a terrible. But I get why they did it. Like, is it the most prolific thing to ever be written? I don't think that's what they meant. I think what they meant by it is it does have the like different like juxtaposition of time periods, but it also has we've got a character who. We have a team of superheroes at the very beginning who are just normal people. They're kind of like the Minutemen in Watchmen. They were normal people who came together. They had all their problems. And in the very first issue, uh, they they get back together for one like reunion moment because they've all kind of retired. And somebody blows up the building that they're in. And all of them die but one. And he is the blue flame. And now he is... You see him as this drunken like mess of a human on earth but at the same time we also see him in this place with these aliens who are determined to destroy earth and they say that earth has no value and it's like to the universe it's not doing anything good and they've brought him here to them as the champion because he was a superhero and he has to mm. prove the goodness and the worth of humanity but he is also a drunken mess at the time frame and so you do get that like the way dr manhattan is kind of in like multiple places at the same time throughout watchmen and we see you know you're kind of like oh we're here but then we're also here you see you get that you get these incredibly flawed superheroes you get these incredibly flawed humans um, and he's kind of hoping that that is actually the way he can sell these aliens on what makes humans worth it. Is it's our flaws and the fact that we still <laughs> try to be better than them on a daily basis. Because he's like, there's nothing I can do that says, like, you know, we're not perfect. We're, yeah. we're never going to be perfect. And so his whole <clears throat> argument is, yeah, we're not good, but we try to be. And isn't that kind of enough? And he's also dealing it's with like asking for a participation. It's medal. asking for a participation medal like, out of on. our lives. We, we we're doing it. We're trying our absolute best, but it is very. I mean, it's Christopher Cantwell, so it's very well, well written. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been a fantastic story. It was one of those where it's one of those. That you're not going to pick it up and just flip through the pages and read it really quickly and be like, that was amazing. Congratulations, yeah. me. I just read a book. It's You're going to take some time. Like in the sense of Watchmen where you're like, I have to, where am I right now? What is happening right now? You know, now we've got a situation where like his brother-in-law has been missing and he's dealing with the fact that his brother-in-law is from Guatemala and he's missing in the real world, like, while he's, or, you know, in the present time. Like, and he's trying to, like, this drunken mess of a human is who has to determine whether or not we live is also having to find, like, his actual brother-in-law who has gone missing and they don't know what happened. And he's not, you know, they're like, oh, he's not technically here, like, in the way, like, they say he should be. Like, maybe ICE picked him up and they're dealing with all of that. So there's, like all of these layers to the story and it is a very very deep book and take the time and read it this is issue six so honestly we're probably going to see a trade come out soon yeah. um unless it is only an eight part book because if it's only eight vault we'll usually hold it and do one trade um so i don't know if it'll if if we're going to keep going but i mean honestly they could keep this book going for easily for 12 issues or more um, wow. Because he has not proven crap to keep us alive yet. Well, it's probably going to take him 12 issues to still continue to prove. But yeah, to do his best. Yeah. Um, speaking of Vault, Human Remains came out this week. This is a Peter Milligan's book about um, how emotional humans are in an alien race that is determined to destroy us based on those, issue, those emotional problems. Um... Aliens have come down, and anytime you have an emotional experience at all in humanity, uh, they will literally rip you in half. 
And so humans are dying left and right. We have a scientist who is trying to figure out what they're doing. Uh, this one, this particular issue, this is issue four. And this is the scientist actually running experiments on how to like get the aliens attention and how to stop the aliens and hopefully possibly catch an alien so that they can figure out what the hell is going on. Because you can't not have emotions as humans. Yeah, unless you're on antidepressants. Um, but, you know, anger is an emotion. Like, happiness, sadness, even, like, just raising your voice. Like, there's a, a, a character in here whose dad is got, has dementia. And so he doesn't know where he is. And so even, like, the panic of, like, where am I, where am I, can, like, cause the aliens to come. So, I mean, any, even the smallest bit of emotion that we don't register as an emotional reaction mm -hmm. counts to, like, drawing these aliens in. It's a great concept. Mm -hmm. Because we are very emotional people. We it are is. very emotional. It's a little overwhelming sometimes. But, yes. But uh, I, could, I could easily see this planet being wiped out in, like, the first three days. Yeah, I'm surprised that it's lasted, like, as long <laughs> as it has. Like, watching this, like, reading this book, I'm like, wait a second. Like, there's no way there's that many humans left. Because you'd have all the humans who were like, I'm going to destroy these aliens. And, like, get all angry about the fact that aliens were here. And so, I'm like, where are those people? Those people would be gone. Yeah, also the millions of people who are going to immediately cower in fear. All of the people who have siblings would be dead. Yeah. Because the first time your sibling said anything to you at all, once the aliens were around, doesn't matter what it is, you'd have some kind of emotion about yeah. it. You're going to feel some type of way about your sibling uh, existing, and it's probably going to lead to you being killed by an alien. I'll be curious to see if this book discovers a way to get rid of emotions. We'll see. Uh, very intriguing so far, so check out uh, Human Remains from Vault. And it's Peter Milligan. And it's Peter Milligan, yeah. who's a great writer. Um, Good Boy from Source Point Press. This is issue two. Honestly, truly, this is not going to take me very long to tell you what it's about. This is John Wick if it was the dog that was hunting down John Wick's attackers <laughs> instead of John Wick hunting down people who were after his dog. Which, I mean, after after you watch John Wick, that's immediately what you think is, well, can I see it from the dog's perspective? Well, here like, you let's go. Let's switch the roles, which is, I mean, that's exactly, like, what, so more, what more do you need? <laughs> yeah, so this is a world where dogs are, like, anthropomorphic, and people, like, and they also, like, the... The dog's owner has gotten out of the business, but then somehow he still gets killed by somebody within, like, the, you know, that crime ring, and now he's on a hunt to get him, so now he's like, I'm back in the game kind of thing, but it's a dog! Yeah. It's ridiculous. And uh, it's wonderful at the same time. So if you're a fan of John Wick, and you were like, I really need to see this dog, go. Yeah, or like maybe you if are. you're reading Berserker, you know, mm -hmm. hop on this as well. Yeah. You know, if you just want some good, fun violence. It's there. There it is. Yeah, look. Little violence there for you. I like when he goes to get his suit made. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, do you want something stylish or stealthy? And he's like, how about both? And I'm like, oh my god, this is ridiculous. Like, I also am going to read this in Keanu's voice. Oh, of course. <laughs> Like, he should have pitched this one, too. If I secretly found out that this was actually Keanu Reeves writing this one, too, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I it's it's definitely worse. Source, yeah, point, source press, point Press, yeah. Number one? Two. Number two. Number two. And uh, the coolest thing about Good Boy, in my opinion, honestly, is that every issue comes with a Frank Avila cover. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, I think I'm out. I think I sold my last copy of issue one today, actually. Uh, but it's yeah. it's there it is. Uh, speaking of Source Point Press, Tales from a Dead Astronaut, issue two. Uh, this is literally an astronaut who is dead in space, thinking about everything he experienced in his lifetime, and kind of philosophizing on it. Yeah, kind of, kind of an anthology in the sense that every issue he's thinking about different people. But at the same time, there is the like over like arching story of he has now been like the, of his experience in space, and like he's been pulled out of, by aliens, and so each 
story, <laughs> like the frame tell of it is him caught by these, and in this issue is him caught by these aliens. And so as they're like experimenting on him, it'll pull him out of the story. And so it's like you never get a complete story within the okay. anthology because he's like, oh, this reminds me of so-and-so when she did this. And then you see that story. And then the aliens do something while they're working on him. And he's like, oh, that hurt. These aliens are now doing this. And it goes back to that. And then he, like, goes back to being unconscious. And uh, he has a different experience entirely when he goes back. Kind of, it's lucid dreaming, essentially. Yeah. Like, it's in the way that you fall asleep and you're in one dream. And then something wakes you up. And then you go back. You don't go back into that dream. Right. It's the same thing. Um, it's really interesting the way they did this. And... Uh, I'm I'm just curious to see. Actually, after the end of issue two, I'm very curious to see what the hell happens next. Yeah, and the art on these source point, you're doing a fantastic job. Hiring artists. Your artists have been on point, and I like the weird shit. Keep going with the weird shit. Keep pitching the weird stuff, and, and, and I will keep reading your books. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. We got four more on here. And I'm going to do this one quickly because it is Noctera. This is a one-shot within Noctera. This is the story of Blacktop Bill. Blacktop so special. this is the Blacktop Bill special. This is the person that's been chasing them all through the, the first arc of Noctera. Uh, our main character has been chased by somebody, and they keep referencing this Blacktop Bill and what he's, who he is and what he's doing and how he comes from this dark past. This is the story of Blacktop Top Bill. Uh, who was a hitman and a murderer, and he just kills people with no problems whatsoever, and this is kind of his story. Um, and a reminder that in Scott Snyder's World of Monsters, the worst thing you could be is a terrible human being. Sounds about right. Sounds sounds about right. Sounds about Scott Snyder. Yeah, I do enjoy that they are expanding this universe, um... Because I kind of fell behind on the main series, but mm -hmm. everyone has been saying this is one of the best books out right now. It's a great book. Um, so, you know, kind of similar to uh, Something is Killing the Children. If you can expand the universe... Do it. Please do it. Yeah. And don't hesitate, you know. Uh, Dark Horse. Dark Horse is all over the place. We talk about, for the longest time, that Dark Horse did not... They, like, <laughs> slow out, rolled yeah. out of the... the yeah. Like, the, the time when uh, they stopped printing comics for those two months, like, Dark Horse had the slow roll back, and now Dark Horse is like, hey, we've been sitting on all this for a minute. We got it ready to go, finally. Here we are. Uh, this is Daisy issue two, and this is all about a young girl named Daisy who is actually a giant, essentially, and she is in this small town where all of the children have one person that they call father, and that father... Uh, is a fallen angel and there is some crazy crazy uh, stuff that's going to go down in this book and it's a five part mini series and we have a main a, a girl who a woman whose son has been missing and she shows up to this town issue one she's trying to figure all of this out we're seeing the story of the fallen angels and how like giants came and how the Nephilim are like not necessarily like there's nothing you know they have the powers of angels but they're not good and uh things just get worse and worse and we're sh honestly like after issue one i was like this might be too much like it's kind of like the god damned from jason aaron where you're <laughs> like there is so much yeah. mythos to this world so quickly and it stays in that there is still a lot of mythos but issue two we're actually getting a story and we're seeing what Daisy wants. We're seeing uh, what the, you know, what the story is going to be. But we are definitely, we are living in a world much like that where the mythos is strong. But now we're in the regular like, hey, how do we get out of that kind of moment? And uh, unlike the goddamn from Jason Aaron where you never step down from that really high cloud, we've kind of stepped down from that. And we're just on the base level of, all right, now we're going to tell you a, a story within the, the it, within that world. Yeah. Um, so after issue two, I'm definitely excited for issue three. Um, but if you are fans of The Goddamned, I think you will love this. And if you're fans of just those classic dark horror stories where it's like, this, everything is dark all the time. Yeah. And we have some really detailed art to show it to you. You're going to love Daisy. 
Yeah, I, uh, you know, Dark Horse has been quite impressive. Um, this is one that I'm waiting for because, again, if they're going to keep doing the hard covers, I'm going to keep buying them. <laughs> That's all you have to do, Dark Horse. Put it in a hardback, and I, it's my, I'll buy it. I right. promise. The one person in the world who's like, I want a hardcover. Yes. Right here next to me. Everybody time. else is like, I want a trade paperback. Don't give me a hardcover. And Phil's like, hardcover, hardcover. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Cool. Two red fives back to back to round out the hot Whoa. two titles of the week. I know. What's red five? Red 5 is another small press that's <laughs> on the rise. Um, we've got three titles. And honestly, I want to put both of these on the wall because they're so good. Uh, but one of them that we're going to talk about, I think, is actually at the breaking point. Uh, but Red 5 is definitely on, on the rise. And The Verge is one of those that I think... If Ooh. people pick it up, are going is going to be the one that kind of puts Red Five like in people's talk points. Nice. Uh, this is a a four part mini series as of now, and basically, all of New York City, all the boroughs, have been have become different points in time, and different places in the world. So one part, like you can see, like on the cover, it says next stop Beijing, twelve thirteen eighty. Mm -hmm. So one borough has become Beijing in the twelve. 1200s Whoa. and one borough is uh the vikings and like the norse community and one borough is like another like you know another part of history and we've got once again a detective story where we've got somebody was murdered and they're trying to figure out who it was and it's like oh well it kind of looks like it could have been the vikings but then it could have been this and so she's having to go to all of these different boroughs and in issue one she finds she meets a, the detective meets a person who is the monitor of the verge and the verge is this how all of these different time periods have hit into new york and what is controlling them and we're finding out more about our detective she is not who she says she is mm -hmm. and it's a huge thing like if you're from a different time period you have to register and all this stuff and so she's been possibly hiding what time period she's from and even now while she's telling the person in charge of the verge who she is she might actually be lying is what we as readers know this story has so many like intricate levels it's got some cool art it's got some like the ability to go in a million different directions like this is a great book for red five and i hope that people start picking it up and we see more and more people get excited about red five because stuff like this shows that they are really exploring the creative uses of storytelling and comic books um excited okay. yeah what's the what's the other book they have carrier is another big one they have right now which is all about the militant pink uh pigeons in new york city dude matt loves it it's <laughs> What? You don't know about this? Oh my god. I don't I'm grabbing you weren't here. This is the live stream that oh, Matt did. Man. That's why. This is issue oh. one. They're militant pigeons in New carrier pigeons in New York City. And it's a great freaking story. Uh and crazy art and <laughs> dude, you're pigeons. gonna it's pigeons, dude. You're gonna love it. <laughs> like, ridiculous. Yeah, Nigel, you want the verge, I'll get you issue one and two. Uh you actually would probably like it because I know you like uh, the history. I've been yeah. trying to get all the history people Once on. Show something. I guess we could. Oh yeah. Haven't you already done it? No, I, I mean we did, but it's been weeks. Show one thing of military pigeons. Militant pigeons, like I mean, come on. Do you need to see that? You do. Do you need to know? I mean, it just means you should come pick up the book. I want to know what it. they look like. Yeah. It's like. Haven't you already read this? <laughs> no. No, he saw it when I showed it to him on the live stream and was like, "What is this? I love Give me it." That. <laughs> right, he's going to read it right now. He's not going to pay attention to us the rest of the time. Uh, so the other one that Red Five's been doing recently is The Box. And, oh, my God, he, we've lost oh Matt. Gosh. Our producer is gone for the rest of the night. Uh, the uh, the Box was the other Red Five issue. And, actually, issue three was last week, and issue four was this week. So oh, it wow. kind of, I think, because of delays, we got the wrap-up yeah. within it. So I'm just going to hold up issue three while you talk about issue four. Um. This is the story, and we have all four issues. This is the story of, we talked about, this is another thing that they've been doing a couple, a, a lot of publishers have been hitting on in comics, is the idea of this box that could create mm -hmm. anything, like a Pan, Pandora's box that, you know, you open it up, you can get anything. Well, in this story, there are actually two boxes, one that can take away anything and one that can give anything. And this guy who's like, 
run-of-the-mill criminal kind of thing ends up with the box that can give anything and so everybody is coming after him for it and this is his story of dealing with all these mobsters and stuff that are coming for this box honestly and truthfully I'm not sure that we're not getting another volume of this book because the way it ends we could definitely get it uh, but it is a it was a surprisingly like cool story the whole way through like I actually went back and read issue two because I was like did I read issue two like I I don't remember and I read I so I ended up reading the whole series again today essentially <laughs> uh, or yesterday and I was like dude as a whole like buy it and trade if you need to buy all four issues that they're out now because reading it all together I was like this is really cool because his girlfriend gets involved and like she's in prison and he tries to get her involved and then like the only like everybody who gets this box like ends up using it for the wrong reasons because it can pull anything out and he is like trying so hard to keep it out of those people's hands and mm -hmm. it's cool to see like this criminal who is like i don't want the wrong people to get it and then his girlfriend who's also literally in jail is like i don't want the wrong people to have this box and it's like a really really awesome story and there's so much like like I'm just I'm gonna hold that you can hold that because you're closer to the camera like this double page spread of it like the peer through and like watch as they walk through this thing and on I I think that red five is gonna become you know like source point is moving up we've talked about that like source points kind of like hit a lot of titles mm -hmm. where people are starting to know source point this is your next source point this is your like they're the one where source point was a year ago where we were like oh what is source point like who are they red five is kind of right there right now who yeah. are they what are they but they're putting out three or four books at a time that are all really good if you pay attention to them but they'd fly under your radar if you didn't know to look for them. So grab a Red 5 book, whichever one you want to try, and just be prepared for some, like, the, honestly, this art is, on like, the same as the boys. Like Yeah, it's it's solid art. I mean, yeah. they've, they've been impressive with their art so far in their books. Read their stories. Yeah. You'll love them. They're so good. Um, you can't wait to see where that goes. All right. So... Now we're going to talk about some the actual like the top picks of the week. Uh, remember, we're going to so give you many. a prize at the end of the show for sticking with us. So uh, stick with us because there will be a prize at the end of the show. If you're watching live, if you're watching this later, you're not going to win because I already gave it away. Um, but we've got thank thank oh the speaker's so quiet. Um, but it was funny even if it was quiet. He'll add it in post. <laughs> Just earmark this time. Time <laughs> right. stamp this. Time stamp. Insert <laughs> laugh here. Uh, but we've got uh, some picks of the week. One of them we talk about, some of them we talk about all the time, so we can go yes. through them a little bit faster. Yeah. Uh, Not All Robots, Issue 5 from AWA Upshot, and the great and wonderful Mark Russell, who is the Wizard of Oz. Let's just be honest. He's <laughs> great yes. and powerful in all ways. Yes. Um, he, he just can't stop being great at everything. And this was one of those books that by the time we hit this issue, I was still, like, I understood where we were going in terms of what his message was, mm -hmm. which is that we're always going to be replaced by something better, which is kind of the running theme of life in general. But this actually kind of finally now moves the book to a new step mm -hmm. where it's like, all right, we've set up this world. We've given you kind of all the social commentary but now we are going to actually step outside of uh, the bubble. Yeah. As it is. And um, this is Mark, Mike Diodato Jr., who is kind of artist and resident at AWA, yes. honestly. Um, and, our, and I know for you, you were originally like, oh, AWA hasn't drawn me in for any, because I'm not sure about any of the art or any of that. And then I was like, hey, Mark Russell is doing a book with Mike Diodato Jr. And you were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and that's really, I mean, I think I'm more inclined to read the AWA books with Mark, uh, with Mike Diodato's name on it, um, and then also the guy who does uh, Crimson Cage, which is uh, Alex Cormack. Oh my god, uh, Crimson art, Cage is great. Yeah, the art on that book is fantastic. Um, but again, this is one of those books where I'm sitting there, and I'm reading it, and there there's these serious conversations, so in this book... Um, you have the mom of a family who um, killed one of the house bots. 
Yeah, I guess back it up a little bit. If you've never read Not All Robots. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we are in a world where everybody has a robot in their home. Humans are no longer... The only jobs that we're humans have pets. are like... Yeah, we're the house pets, essentially, yeah. to, to robots. So everybody has a house bot. And now we're at the point where... Those robots are obsolete, and we're now making man bots, which are yes. robots that look like humans and think more like humans. Which is funny that everything new is everything old is new again, kind mm-hmm. of mentality. Um, but so we're in a ro- world where humans are essentially just pets, and they don't want to be, and they're tired of being obsolete. And now the first generation of robots are now obsolete, and they don't want to be. So there's all these riots and rebellions from the robots who are currently at the level of replacement. And the humans are also having their own level of riots and rebellions. And mm-hmm. it, it just kind of comes to a head. And, yeah, we have a mom of our main family who uh, has killed a robot. And so she's been exiled. Yeah, but it's, uh, the thing that I really liked about this issue in particular is that we return to their justice system mm-hmm. which is just a computer it. where you insert your uh, your defense and then it tells you in a matter of seconds if you're innocent or guilty and in this one she doesn't have a defense and so she kind of just she kind of gives this you know real cliched and it's like oh here we go all right the pitiful human yeah and then this computer goes on this rampage about why they don't shouldn't be saving humans because we all suck we all pretty much did this to our own planet and this is them just being like well we're doing this because you're too stupid to do it on your own essentially yeah like you don't know how to save your own planet or be reasonable and it even makes a good point where it's like, hey, we have a justice system in place where it's not based off of race or class or anything. It's purely based on mathematical algorithms that we have set in place. And you're just like, oh, man, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> this kind of hurts as it, a human. <laughs> it really does. And and then you get this Mark Russell of it all, though, where he yep. talks about you know the idea of of being obsolete Mm -hmm. and the feeling of being replaced and like the neighbor across the street his man bot is literally the wife like the main character's wife he he gets a man bot that looks exactly like her and names her the same thing and he's like hey like i I don't like if you want to borrow my wife sometimes (laughs) because yours is gone now and it's like like, the, the audacity of, of humanity is honestly and truthfully all Mark Russell is trying to point out and then at the same time say, hey, maybe be careful with the decisions we make because no matter right. what, we're all going to feel this way. All We all feel like we're replaceable and we've all been replaced. Yeah. And it's only a matter of time before it happens to you if it hasn't already. And that's really, again, the genius to me of Mark Russell because you have that first moment in the book where they kind of put down humans pretty mm-hmm. quickly where it's like humans suck and you're like how dare you say that and then the rest of the issue is just proving you know like the guys out in the desert yeah you know who are basically the good old boys of america who are like we're gonna take back atlanta and it's like no no you're not no, <laughs> you're definitely not you're definitely not um but it's such a wonderful wonderful book the and it's just again mark russell is so great mm-hmm. at social commentary yeah, and all it the just time. continues to stay that high level. And uh, at the end of this issue, we learned that this is just volume one. Yes. So yes. Yay! Thank and you, Mark world, Russell. And war, I feel like arc two is going to be full world building. Yeah, we let's are, open this up. We are in a place where we're going to see so much more, and I can't wait. Yes. Uh, Winchester Mystery House issue three. Matt hasn't read, so I'm not going to tell you all about it. He read. Oh, good. So I'll tell you about the first half. Um, but actually, just to tell you what the book in general is about, uh, this is the story of Sarah Winchester and her uh, house in California, where she is the heiress to the Winchester rifle fortune. Her husband, her daughter have died. She keeps getting haunted by the idea of these ghosts who were people who were killed by the Winchester Rifles. She talks to a medium. Medium says, go to California, build a house, house all these spirits of these people uh, who have been affected by that. So she is uh, constantly in production to build a house for this. If you don't know, this is all a true story, um, or at least that is. Um, And now we are seeing the comic book form, which is actually signed off by the Winchester Mystery House Association. The actual Winchester Mystery House people have signed off on this book. 
And um, this is the story kind of of Sarah and her niece living in that house and all of the crazy things that happen to it and where it's going. Um, this is really cool. Uh, I know uh, Joshua Warner, who is the writer on this book, we just, Phil and I just learned today, is actually one of the co-founders of Source Point Press. Um, so that's really cool to see that. I love that the small presses are always, like, completely involved in every aspect yeah. of it. Like, you know, James Hayek from Scout writes uh, at least one book, like, every season of the books that are coming out from Scout. There's always one. Uh, Adrian and Damien Wassel from um, Vault are the editors yeah. of all the books. And so I love that the small presses are just like, hey, we do this still, by the way. Like, we have to do everything because we're a small business. And right. I love to see that. Um, but Winchester Mystery House is fantastic. We uh, know for a fact that uh, there is a free comic book day issue that's going to come out. And actually, uh, Source Point commented on my Instagram today to tell me that there is more coming from Winchester Mystery House in general. Yes. So uh, I'm very excited to see that that is going to keep going because this is um, a fantastic thing. This is... I, I made an Instagram post about how books are... The, the way that we get to go to places that we never like necessarily we can't always go everywhere we want to and the Winchester Mystery House has been on my list of places I wanted to go forever and this book kind of gives you a chance to to go into that uh and explore it a little bit a little bit more and I love that they're making this book because it is such a fascinating piece of architecture and a huge piece of history that's just nobody understands and you know Sarah Winchester is obviously not alive anymore so nobody knows what's real and what isn't of right. the story behind this potentially haunted house so it's cool that we get to have all of these stories now and, and hear it. And uh, it's very expensive to tour the Winchester House. The tour is not a cheap tour, so I'm that glad that there's a comic me. book that I can tour it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it ongoing? Uh, it, this is issue three. This is the end of first volume. Uh, and then there will be the free only comic three. book day. Only three issues in the first volume. Uh, and then the free comic book day title is the next thing to come, I believe. And then, uh, like I said source point so there will be more so uh well i assume that he's busy running the company so he can do a few issues yeah, and then has to take i guess that's fine uh ice cream man issue 27 uh the metamorphosis i don't really need to tell you why ice cream man is a pick of the week but ice cream man will always be a pick of the week when it comes out uh, w maxwell prince just likes to remind us once a month that he is an incredibly talented writer and loves to play with the medium of comic books and an ice cream man is a hor it is an anthology and it's we always say it's a horror anthology but really i think it's just like a existential crisis anthology psychological psychological yeah. anthology and he always references the idea of like we are we are bugs like as humans we're just meat for bugs we are bugs we are uh, he's been exploring that concept since one week in the library, honestly. And in this issue, it's literally a bug uh, who becomes a human who hey. becomes a bug, essentially. Um, so I absolutely adore everything that's come out of Ice Cream Man. It's just such a good book. It's solid every time. Uh, we talk about, you know, people... There was this big boom of Ice Cream Man. Like, of course, issue one, like, everybody went back to. But then there's a boom where people, like, were around issue, like, 17, 18, where the Dr. Seuss ones came out. And everybody was like, oh, I have to get all these Ice Cream Man issues. And they bought all the back issues. And then they didn't do the Dr. Seuss covers again. So people kind of fell off again. And you're missing out on one of the solidly best books of comic books yeah. all the time. Like, I pick it up wherever you want to. doesn't really matter. But Ice Cream Man is just, it's... It's an anthology. You can start anywhere. You can enjoy it anywhere. And um, literally every issue is W. Maxwell Prince just reminding us how much you can do with words on a page. Yeah. And that's also a good chance to pick up your previous catalog and or and or go to the Image website and just look at what each issue is about. Because, yeah. you know, like you said, you can just grab whichever one seems interesting to you. Yeah. Uh, they do a lot of great concepts. Yeah, we had a, one of our subscribers today doesn't normally subscribe to Ice Cream Man, uh, but was a literature major in college and was like, oh, you know, I loved the Metamorphosis book. Uh, and I was like, oh, read this. You'll love it. Then you, you have made, in fact, a great choice. 
<laughs> um, Nine Stones from Behemoth, a Texas yes. publisher, as we really? recently learned. Yeah, we learned that last week. Their uh, headdress on the inside says uh, they're based in Dallas. So, um, Behemoth uh, issue, or Nine Stones issue five. five. Uh, Honestly, this was one of those books when it first came out that you and I both were like, it kind of feels like I watched like an anime, but I don't really know what the point of it was at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And I kept going, and you didn't. I didn't. And it became a very emotional journey that uh, has continuously broke my heart in every single freaking issue. Uh, it is the story of a teenage boy whose dad is a drug dealer. And the dad decides he needs to go into the family business. And on the first day of his work, he gets paired with the other teenage boy, essentially. so Because it makes sense for the teenagers to work together. And uh, there's this darkness we know of inside of the, the main character. And we kind of see like this like shadowy monster that follows him. Um, which this issue, we finally learned what that was. Oh, okay. um, uh, but... In his relation, they the two boys fall in love over the course of their working together. They have this incredible story, but the problem is, is that it's almost Romeo and Juliet esque because you can't be the son of a drug dealer and be in a relationship, and you definitely can't be the son of this like mobster drug dealer and be gay. And that has come to play like. And on all sides, you know, the one, the other teenage boy that he falls for is like, I can't do this. Your dad will kill me just in general for being in a relationship with you. And then, of course, like now it's like, oh, you've made me the laughing stock of the other mob families because I can't have a son who's gay. And so they they're dealing with so much in this book. And it's great because it's never a coming out like it's never that oh, well, okay, so I think I'm gay. Like, it's not a coming out story. Like, these boys both already know that about themselves. Mm -hmm. But now, so it's just a part of the story in that capacity, but it is, it is kind of Romeo and Juliet up until this point, and now we see that we've learned in this issue that he's actually, our main character is actually on trial for a murder, and they are trying to get all of this out of his memories. And the Nine Stones are actually referenced to how far in distance he is going into his mind. Oh. So in the sense of, like, the way that the, the British measure thing in stones, this right. is actually, like, in the d a distance stones kind of situation, of, which I know that's weight, not distance, but this is them using it as distance. We need you to go to the fifth stone. Um, and this is issue five, and he's at the fifth stone of those memories. Okay. And honestly, Julie, since, like, issue three, there hasn't been an issue that I didn't want to cry at the end of. So just warning you. Wow. Uh, it's great. I did not, like, this is that book that every time it comes out, I'm like, this book does not have the right to be this good after the issue one that it had. Uh, but it is. So deal with it because it's that good. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be one of the trade ones for me, cause I, I do know I, I I decided to to not continue on, but you you talk so highly of it yeah, and Behemoth, yeah. and slowly working slowly its way. way away. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, right. Nobody's child saving white rhinos, man. Yeah. We're making some progress here. <laughs> monkey meat. Yes, monkey meat number one. This is from Image Comics. Um. I am not 100% certain what this book is about. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of thought that it was going to be like a psychedelic Willy Wonka based on the very beginning, where it's kind of like, we're going to take you on an expedition of uh, Monkey Meat Island. Um, but this book is... It's, it's bananas. If you told that. me that the guy from the gorillas drew it, I would believe you. Yeah. I, I literally, I had to think, I was like, I'm going to wait until Phil comes, but, because, like, I that's all I could think. I was like, mm -hmm. is this done by the gorillas? Like, this is so, like, in their art style. Jamie like, Howlett. Huh? Jamie Howlett. Yeah. Thank you. But that's not who does it. No, it's uh, Juhi ba, uh, Juni Ba, uh, which I know for covers. Mm -hmm. um, he's done some, some covers for DC and Marvel. Uh, and I know he has a he has a book out that's pretty popular. I forget what it's called. And after honestly seeing him drawing like monkeys and how crazy they look, I actually wanted to do a monkey prince variant for DC when that comes out. Ooh, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. but that is not a bad idea. I know. I saw this book 
when this book came in, literally when I took it out of the box, I was like, this is going to be in Phil's pick of the week. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what it is yet. I don't know why I ordered it. I can't remember. I was like, I remember that it's a crazy book of some sort, and uh, it's going to be in Phil's Picks of the Week. And yeah. then you were like, these are my picks. And I was like, no, duh, duh, yeah. monkey me. Because it, it is it is kind of a psychedelic Willy Wonka. Yeah. It is also a book of nonsense, and it has nonsense. incredibly crazy art. Uh, kind of reminded me of a Sweet Downfall art. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely get that that same vibe. Um, and I like some of the page layouts here. I like, uh, you know, some of the ways that they fill these pages. It's a little different um, and kind of like it's all over the place. Like I, I, it took me till the end of the issue to think I know what's going on. Yeah, I think it is about a company that makes a product called Monkey Meat. And really it is about a guy who's kind of, like an enforcer for them and yes. when they go out on these like when they go to steal what they want to use for their product mm -hmm. he's kind of their enforcer and he doesn't want to do that anymore and uh that doesn't work out yes and they're kind of rolling out this new product yeah um which they're slowly kind of giving you an idea for what cons that product is made of um and i am I, I, like, yes, I'm sold. And it says it's a thrilling anthology, and, but there was nothing anthology no. style about this particular issue, so I don't know if, like, the next issue is just going to cover a different aspect of the monkey meat business. R which Be I'm kind of hoping for. Yeah, because, yeah. like, we're done. This story is wrapped, kind of wraps yes. up perfectly yeah. at the end of this issue, so I'm assuming that we're just going to see different aspects of monkey meat the business each issue because it's... It, and it's going to go from there. But uh, I love that they have the yeah. Safari ad on the back. They do that, uh, which is a great thing that Image does a lot of times, is the fake ads yeah. in it, uh, since they don't do ads for other books. But you have the Monkey Meat Safari ad on the back, which is just great. Yeah, this is definitely a weird, weird book. Um, and that's why I love it. Yeah. That's why I love it so much. Yes. Uh, let's do Rise of Dracula. So Source this point press. Source point, right? All of the publishers we, all of the issues that we talked <laughs> about each week. This is Phil. Okay. Phil made Rise of Dracula a pick of the week. I am impressed. And what's crazy is I didn't know that this was a sequel to the Cult of Dracula. It was. Which I did not read. You did not. I skipped over that one, so I had no idea that there was anything that came before this. And I will honestly say, as somebody who did read Cults of Dracula, it's okay if you don't read Cults of Dracula and I jump wasn't, into this. I wasn't all that lost. I mean, it's pretty much vampires are going to take over the world. And the way that they're, it's vampires taking over the world, and honestly, you see, like, both the political aspect of that and the, like, physical mm -hmm. vampires taking over the world aspects of it. The only thing is, is you don't know who Dracula is. I don't. And I do. So I'm very excited. And I kind of don't want you to read Cult of Dracula. I told you that you could read all of it. But now I kind of don't because I want you to... I want this moment of when you find out who Dracula is, like, to be a, a reveal. So uh, to back up, for those of you who don't know, um, Source Point Press put out a book called Cult of Dracula. And honestly and truthfully, it kind of felt like their Vampirella. Because uh, Shannon Mayer did the cover B for all of it. So it was like, it was meant to be like, hey, buy this for these hot cover yeah, kind of things. The sexy ladies. Yeah. And I read it by myself, apparently, in this world. And was like, hey, I really like this. Because you have all the references to the actual Dracula story with like Mina Harkness and uh, Van Helsing, all these things. Like they all have some kind of reference in it. But then it's. They go and they're investigating this cult of people who, you know, worship Dracula, who are also vampires in the end. And uh, you have, like, the Brides of Dracula. You have all of that. They all kind of make an appearance. But it was in the early days of Source Point, like, really coming out. And so, like a lot of publishers, like, some issues were really strong. And some issues were, like, half strong and half not. And some issues were just, like, you bought this because Shannon Mare did a cover. Mm -hmm. But I love the way it ended. And I was like, dude, I am so in for whatever Rise of Dracula is because the ending of Cult of Dracula was so badass. And we couldn't show it on the live stream. 
uh, because there was like all this crazy stuff happening that I was like, we can't actually show any of Cult of Dracula's uh, ending nudity. on there, huh? Nudity. There was some nudity, but like, because like you have birth of Dracula kind of situation. Oh, okay. And uh, I, but I was so excited, and so today when Phil handed me his picks of the week and was like, Rise of Dracula is one of my picks, I was like, oh, I feel like I have accomplished something. Well, there's... And I didn't write it. There's so. this um, Ellie character mm-hmm. uh, who is just awesome. Yeah. She's very violent. Um, you know, the thing that I like is you kind of get like... Uh, a, I, and I do like there's the mixture of the political aspect of it. Because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this is vampires actually taking over the world, but they're starting in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Um, and then you also kind of get like the elite upper class vampires like uh, oh, I kind of want to show this page first and you get your blade moment yes. literally oh you get the God. first scene of blade in this book and I saw that <laughs> and I was like oh man I really enjoy everything about this and I think that's kind of part of it where I was sitting here and I was like oh man this is like blade if you took blade out of it yeah it's like, like there's just, nobody to save you. It's yeah. just like it's the beginning. Yeah. Uh, like Stephen Dorff is probably in the second issue of this book. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm okay with that if he is. Is he the like, one in the gimp suit right? in this top corner here <laughs> that's like, like electrocuting a boy? <laughs> it's like <laughs> if issue two of Rise of Dracula just has like early, like late 90s, early yeah. 2000s Stephen Dorff in it in the background, I'm going to be happy with it. I'm not going to be mad about it at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. It's it's surprisingly good, and on honestly, truly, they don't have Shannon Mare covers this time, so it's like they were like, "Hey, we're gonna focus on the story this this yeah. go round." Uh, now that we've got a following of some sort, let's just tell the story, and I'm I'm here for it. And source point, dude, I am all over everything you're doing these days. Yeah, here's your uh, your blade. Your blade, your blade sequence with the the blood showers. It's literally the first scene of yeah. Blade, and I'm not mad that it happened. No, at not all. at all, not at all. And I think that again, that was a big selling point for me, where I was like, "Oh man, can you imagine if they just continue this, but there's no hero? Yeah, and we actually get to see uh, vampires take over the world. There's like, no hero in Cult of Dracula. It's Perfect. a it's from Sold. the Dracula side. So we are we are fo- Dracula is our hero. And honestly, like, if you read, like, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and you cheered on, like, the Michelle Gomez, like, Lilith character, if you watch Chilling Adventures, then you will love this because literally your Dracula is, like, that kind of level of awesome. And so, you know. Well, I'm going to read this series without reading Cult of Dracula. I'm in. I can't wait. And then I'll go back and read Cult of Dracula. Let's talk about this ridiculousness. Also from Behemoth making it into Picks of the Week. Yes. With uh, Night Janic Issue 1. Yeah. Wait. That is, is the name of the book. It is actually called Night Janic. It's not instructions. It's not for instructions for making a proper. Making a proper no, it is called Night Janic. That's a bummer. Janic is J A N E K. For those of you following along at home. And it's set in the kingdom of Fancy Lakes. <laughs> um, this is a parody <laughs> of all things night books. This book is so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one that I was like, man, I cannot. When I, I, again, saw the cover with the instructions for making a proper offering to Forgotten Gods. And I was like, Phil's going to love this book. Yeah. And then I told you, literally, when I handed it to you today, I was like, the scene in the market where they're yelling out what they had <laughs> is what sold me on the book. And I read that to Matt last night. Because they're like, we've got, we've got raisins. These are, we've got spoiled grapes, and they're like, guys, these are just fresh yeah. raisins. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sold. You've got me. Your uh, honest advertisement. But it's the story of a knight who, it, it's, it is an entire parody book. Let me yes. re- once again say that. This is the story of a knight who, who thinks he's like, you know, a knight of the round table level, like quality knight. And, uh... He's kind of not like if Monty Python uh, was his in charge of his scripting. Yeah. And honestly, if you are fans of Monty Python and the Holy Grail and you're not reading this book, please pick it up because you'll love it because it is very similar to that. Nigel somewhere just was like, I need that book. Uh, but yeah. if you are fans of honestly, truthfully, like that is that is where this kind of falls. It's it's a guy who thinks he's this great knight, but if somebody walks behind him with coke. I wouldn't be surprised. 
Yeah, and and it's great too because there's this sequence here where he runs into this girl who's being arrested, and she starts going into like this deep background of why she needs his help, and he just completely zones out, <laughs> and it cuts back, and she has a a literal like chart. <laughs> yeah, she's that. like on the seventh <laughs> chart. You can see here, and I was like, "Okay, Shannon, stop talking. He's not listening anymore. He's already left." Also, your uh, roommate is literally screaming. All caps. Put it in my box. Yeah, <laughs> so. it's it's such a good time. Uh, okay. I was I was laughing a lot throughout this issue. Yeah. it is. Yeah, pure parody. It's it's fantastic, and yeah, he's like he's the worst best knight ever, and I uh, can't wait to see where his quest goes. And again, Behemoth, you are on the rise. I can't wait to see more things from Behemoth. They've made it to the point where like it used to be like when Behemoth put out a book, I'm like, oh, I'll order like two of cover A and like one or mm-hmm. two of cover like the you know the other additional covers, and now I'm like, all right. What's the is there a one in ten? Because I'm probably getting ten anyway. Like, do they have a one in ten? Uh, it did not. Okay, but I'm starting to look for those because honestly, you're like, because I wanted if there is, it might have. I don't know when I ordered it, could have that was two months ago. Don't ask me questions about that. I've slept. That's fair. Um, but Night Janic issue one. Seriously, Monty Python fans, read this freaking book. You're gonna love it. It is, it is right there. Uh, and it's gonna be great. It's, it's a Big, it's a big giant uh, mess of a character, and I can't wait to see him mess everything up every issue. Oh yes, one hundred percent. Uh, this is this is your book. Yes. Technically, I talked about this last week on the live stream, and if you watched my really fast rendition of the live stream, you heard me say I can't wait for Phil to read this book because this is one of your like comic heroes. Yes. So the art in this book is Shaky Kane. Um, this is Crime Destroyer, True Till Death. Um, it is from Floating World Comics. Uh, Shaky Kane is easily my favorite artist, and I will tell you why. And I have I was saying this for a while, and then finally someone else said it, and now I think now that two people have said it, it is it's, true. It's fast at that point. Right? He is the punk rock Jack Kirby. Mm, I can see that. All of his influence. He is a huge Jack Kirby fan. A lot of what he's done in his career is kind of homage to Jack Kirby. I actually wore his shirt, Mm -hmm. one of his shirts, to the wedding. Um, Our wedding. Mine and Matt's wedding. For those, there are more than one wedding. To the wedding. And uh, Donnie Cates got mad at me for it. Because he was like, Jack Kirby wouldn't like this. Jack Kirby. And I was like, I don't fucking care. It's Shaky Kane, and I love Shaky Kane. Um, This is kind of... (laughs) Back in the day, Shaky Kane was doing comic strips in um deadline magazine and a lot of it is basically again jack kirby homage but it's like superhero comics with a little bit of like a biblical kind of like poking fun at religion a little bit um and this kind of picks up right where that left off um you have the pilgrims which are kind of like straight edge punk gang members um, you have your superhero crime destroyer who <laughs> has uh, two fists on his shoulder pads, which is extremely goofy. Um, and there's actually a lot of kind of jabs at comics in general. Uh, like there's a scene where there's someone assassinates a reverend and then yells Excelsior. <laughs> like, That's like, fantastic. There's a lot of jabs at Marvel Comics in this. Um, As a true Jack Kirby fan would do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but again, like, the dialogue is really silly, um, and, you know, you're just kind of, kind of like my bad mm-hmm. a little bit, yeah. uh, but a little bit more psychedelic. And a little bit kind of more on the nose, where it's like really in, like, hey, I'm poking fun at a lot of this stuff. Which makes sense, because you said, like, you know, Jack Kirby being his biggest biggest influence. Jack Kirby was definitely saying, hey, superheroes are just a representation of the gods yeah. of our lives, <clears throat> with new gods, and more so even Eternals. Eternals is entirely a conversation about religion and people who... Uh, you know, follow religion and where it comes in. That is Jack Kirby dealing with all of that in different mm-hmm. ways, and so it's not surprising that this would be what that what Shaggy King took from it because I don't I don't see it. You could read Jack Kirby and not take that from it. Yeah, 
Um, and so that's kind of really the biggest appeal. Now, this isn't written by Shaky Kane. Um, it's Jason T. Miles, and I think Josh Simmons is also a writer <laughs> on it. Um, but The Art of Shaky Kane, which is the first driving point for me, uh, it is an $8 book, <laughs> um, but I highly recommend it. It's a little bit thicker than normal. Um, and if you end up liking this, uh, there's also a collected edition of his deadline strips called the Good News Bible. Okay. And uh, it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you like this art style. Did he do the beef? Yeah. 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 The beef for image. <laughs> Which was basically his version of the Hulk, mm-hmm. um, but set in wid- Midwest America involving beef. <laughs> yeah, if you couldn't hear Matt, he said the beef from Image. Yes. Um, I guess going to stick with the oversized, a little bit of uh, price higher books, uh, this is a $6 issue from Uncivilized Books, and this is West. And it's also an incredibly oversized issue. Yes. Um, but sticks with that black and white, like, penciled art mm-hmm. kind of thing that you love. Yeah, uh, kind of like um, like Adult Swim, mm-hmm. where it's kind of very a little childish at times, or you know, it seems like somebody who hasn't necessarily mastered comic book yeah. art. But it's great because it works really well with this story. Mm-hmm. Um, and <sighs> if you sold me at this at a zine festival, I would not be surprised. Like this is like yeah. somebody made a zine mm-hmm. and 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 sold it to me like one on one. And those are some of my favorite books ever. Like that is not like a, like that was not like a dig at all. This is like I this is a like somebody drew this themselves. Didn't like no like didn't do coloring, so they right. didn't go in and color it. There's nothing digitized about this except for the printing of it. Mm. And uh, this is the story of two magicians or witches essentially uh, who don't want to deal with the way society is running and the direction they're going, so they become farmers. But mostly they're just kind of growing their own weed and smoking yeah. it uh, <laughs> at this point. And they decide they need to go, they need to find money somewhere. And they think they're going to go rob a big corporation. And instead they decide to take down Big Corp in the process. Yes. And it's kind of like that, you know, the lovable losers. Mm-hmm. Where you have the one guy who's like, oh, just trust me, it'll be fine. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. I know the spells that I'm casting. Um, but there's, like, I love both characters yeah. a whole bunch. Like, they're really lovable. And, like, there's a scene where they decide that they are going to, I forget what kind of spell it is, but where it's like you walk through oh, walls. Yeah. And then also they're going to mix it with invisibility. But the way to do it is by eating an almond. Yeah. And the one girl's like, I'm an yeah. allergic to almonds. <laughs> this better yeah. have worked because yeah. I might die. And I'm like, I feel that. I also love the cat. I'm here for the yes, cat. Jinx. It's yes, Jinx. It's a Salem the Cat kind of parody. Like the, the cat is a magician who, who screwed up and is now turned into a cat. But unlike Salem who, in Sabrina, who's constantly like, I need to figure out how to become a human again. This cat's like, dude, cats are living the yeah. best life. Like, you feed me. You let, I just lay around. I'm like, never bored. I'm never bored. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm fucking cute. Yeah. Why would I want to be anything but a cat? And I'm like, dude, this, this, this guy's right. Like, I totally agree. You mm-hmm. should always just want to be a cat. I'm, like, looking at my cat while I read this. Like, shop <laughs> cat's, like, lying there, like, doing nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, he's right. You don't pull your weight with anything other than cuteness. And they're, like, they say that to him. They're, like, all you do is lie around and be cute. And he's, like, I know, and you still feed me, don't <laughs> <Yeah>. you? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's so true. I love you. I love you, stupid cat. I love you so much. Yeah, and the art in this book, I mean, even though we kind of said earlier on that it it doesn't feel, you know, like it's it's the best art in the world, there is, like, the pages you were just seeing, like, the way he does some of the magic. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some really, really solid art in this book. The inking that he did, that that it's John Grunt did the whole thing, right, I Mm -hmm. believe? And the inking that he did on his book is just phenomenal because some of the pages are almost completely, like, black and, like, blacked out of the black and white. And it's like, you put... This is somebody who also spent a lot of time just sitting there personally inking these pages. And to me, that means a lot. I love to see... I I want to see that the artist worked... Like, I love seeing the artist worked on it. 
seeing that makes the whole thing like to me it takes it up like seven notches just when i can still see your work lines on it yeah yeah i was really impressed by this book and it was actually one that as i was going through the pile i actually put it i read the first page and then put it down because i was like oh maybe you know maybe i'm not gonna have time to get to it and and then i realized like no wait this is a uh one, this is a publishing company we've never spoken about. Mm -mm. Uncivilized uh, Books is the publisher. Yeah, and so I feel like I'm I'm obligated to read these books that yeah. are completely under the radar. And this, I'm so glad I did. So I was actually really worried that you weren't going get to get to it. And then you put it back in your read pile. And mm -hmm. so I didn't say anything because I really wanted you to read it. Because it is kind of in like Dirtbag Rapture where it's like I don't want to have to be the hero. I just want to get high and sit around and like, yeah. live my life. And now I'm a hero. And I, it's that reluctant hero situation. But also I, I the, the detail, like the single person detailed pencil work I know you love and so yes. I was like if he puts that if he does not move that back to the other pile I'm gonna come <laughs> tell him he has to because so I accidentally ordered this because this was in Diamond's catalog but it was also in Lunar's catalog I accidentally ordered it from both nice. and so it came in from Diamond I was like I have no idea what this is and I looked at it and I was like or no it came in from Lunar first sorry it came in from Lunar first and I was like I have no idea why I ordered this and then I looked at it and I was like dude this is gonna be dope I don't know what it is but it's gonna be dope yeah. and then it came in from Diamond too and I was like dude now I really hope it's dope because I ordered it from both publishers and then I read it and I was like like it was one of those where I did the same thing like I kind of was like oh, if I don't get to it like right. you know it's fine and then I was like you know what <laughs> Like we're small press people. That's our thing. That's what we do. And I was like, right. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put some of these other books away, and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna read this. And I was like, dude, this is everything I want a comic. It's yeah. it's solid art from somebody who is definitely like exploring the medium. It's somebody doing everything themselves. It's somebody trying to tell a story. You've got reluctant heroes. You've got the the you know the abolishment of big corporation like you've got the like damn the man save the empire mentality yeah. of these characters i was like this is everything i want in everything i read and so i was like i've i've got it and you know we you know last year we were talking a lot about rain like hammers mm -hmm. and how it was kind of like oh these are just normal people and now they're trying to do something and this is the same thing it's like that normal people and normal people art and so it's like the writer and the creator and artist or whatever it's kind of in the same place as its characters where it's like, oh, I just want to make all of this, like, yeah. I, I want to say something. And, you know, Andrew Garfield won an Oscar, to, or not an Oscar, sorry, a Golden Globe tonight. He's going to win an Oscar just next month. Sorry. He, he, he's going to win an Oscar next month. He won a Golden Globe tonight for Tick, Tick, Boom. But it's based on Jonathan Larson, who wrote Rent. And his whole thing was. Like, I'm going to keep making something until I... Because nobody else is saying anything. No. And when you get these comics that come across like this, it's like, hey, I just want to say something. And I'm going to keep making this art in my way. And it's going to be, like, crazy off the wall. And it's going to feel like it's not going anywhere. And then you get to the destination and it's like, oh, we are saying something. And we're making a point. And I uh, am so in. He's already going to scan the QR code to find out more about yeah. Uncivilized Comics because... There's other books. There's other books. Now we got to know. And now I'm curious. There it is. Dude, I want to know what for real is. Or my dog Jojo. My dog Jojo looks kind of cool. Yeah. All right. We're going to explore Uncivilized Comics. If you've read anything from Uncivilized Comics, drop it in uh, the comments and tell us what you've read. Or uh, look them up right now while we're talking about it. Uncivilized yeah. I believe it's uncivilizedbooks.com is their mm -hmm. website. Look it up while you're watching us and see what else they've got coming out. Um, and, cause it's going to be great. And, yes, I will always mention that Andrew Garfield won an award every day. I was just going to wait to see how long it took you to say. It was going to be in comic book news. because yeah, it's no. I no, I I told you I have one thing for comic book news, and it's the only thing that matters. This is a Red 5 imprint. I, uh, oh, really? Yeah, like right there. Red 5. Oh, Stonebot is an imprint of Stone Red 5. Bot. So Red 5 making it into Picks of the Week. Hey. Woo! I don't need I don't need sound effects. I got it myself. Uh, Red 5 making it into Picks of the Week with Mega. Okay, Ooh. let's just be honest. If you make a book about a kaiju, Phil yes. and I are going to put it in Picks <laughs> of the Week. We have, we yeah. have a kaiju addiction. It's going to make it in there. But this book was also really, really good. The art in this book. Oh, my God. Oh, oh boy. Um, this book is, is magnificently well-drawn. 
well colored, well inked, well written. Yes. Because we have a little girl who she's spending some time with her dad. Her parents are obviously divorced, and she wants to go home and be with her mom. Not because she likes her mom more, but because her cat's with her mom. And in her time with her dad, she starts having dreams about her grandpa who's missing. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of those, like, you know, we might be on another plane missing, like, actually connecting with this person. And at the same time, in the awake world, kaijus are uh, starting to awaken. And they are definitely messing (laughs) stuff up in the world. Dude, the scene where the kaiju. I'm about to. Sw- I'm, I'm about I hope to, you're going to show that show because that if you. Next. Oh my god! It is. It is. I need this to be a movie already. Yes, it's I need it so to like this cinematic. is storyboarding. Honestly, yes. truthfully, these are just storyboards oh gosh, for Red Five's first optioned piece of work because this is like this is classic kaiju. All right, beauty. so it starts first here. All, yeah. yeah, let me show you this. Because I also one of the things is I really like the design of these kaiju's. Mm-hmm. Uh, they look really wonderful, but the the first landfall of this kaiju, it's so fucking cool. Like this two page spread, and I flip to the next one, and it's oh god, it's so cinematic. Yes, look at that. Oh my god, we're uh, yes. we're in our own world right now. <laughs> you, if you guys don't care about kaiju's, yes. I'm sorry because Phil and I can gush. Because yeah. I so I put this in the front, like where trades usually go, like new trade. Like sometimes we'll put like we have our hot trades like right. underneath the new this week. Well, I put this up there, so I forgot to read it till today, and I grabbed it and I gave you a copy. I said yes, read this because I had seen it on somebody else's list. And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot that Mega came out this week, and it's a kaiju book. Oh, my God. And so I read it while you were reading the other ones. <laughs> like, you're reading your pile, and you're, like, deep into your reading, and I'm like, don't don't forget yeah. Mega. <laughs> like, I'm, like, sliding it, like, over, like, but but don't forget. And then, like, five minutes later, I'm like, you have a copy of Mega, right, Phil? Like, you have this? And you're like, y- yes, yes, I do. And I was like, okay, well, don't don't forget it. Because uh, it, was, it was so good, and yeah. I... I told you, I was like, it's not even necessarily, like, it, it's so much storyboarding that it's not a long read because it's not, no. it's not as wordy because it's a kaiju book. Mm. Like, you want to see what they're doing and you don't necessarily need a million words to show that. And, uh, Red 5, dude, do it. Do to it, Red 5. You've got it. Yes. I'm also down if they want to with Stonebot to continue on with these like oversized Mm -hmm. you know you have the nice uh solid um covers and the glassiness glass ronin yeah Yeah, it's like glass ronin size if you can't tell from at home um but this is like oh my gosh such a solid kaiju book um and the way they end it i'm not even gonna show you because i think you need to pick up this book just to see it (laughs) is it a one shot no it is it is it is not a one shot there will be more and the cool concept is is like they talk about how earth is actually like a prison for for these kaijus and they've been sleeping this whole time and now they're awake yeah and the little girl is blowing on this horn to awaken like the one that's gonna come in and fuck up all the bad kaiju and you're just like oh my god i can't wait yeah i was like oh man like this is one of those where i wish it like i needed to come out all the time and now i have to go in and make sure i ordered enough of issue two because i'm so in that i'm like oh my god (laughs) matt's making a pile (laughs) i love it dude please yeah i mean the the godzilla fan that you are right i think you'll appreciate it i know i want to just i want like g fest to come back this year and just walk around and be like did you read mega from red five oh my god like I need it to be. I wonder if they'll put it in G Fan magazine. I wonder if they will put it in G Fan. We should check it out. You can subscribe to G Fan magazine at your local comic book store. Uh, lastly, Phil and I are gonna need some tissues. I didn't get around to that one. We didn't get to that one. I know. Great. Next time, next time. A box I, what, yeah, I had time, and I was like, there's a lot of words. I brought this up last week as a book that I needed a uh, Phil to read, and Matt skimmed through it and was like, holy shit, this book is awesome. Yeah, and very, like, is. heavy metal, 2000 AD. It's yeah. black and white, but the art is, like, it's fantastic. A little bit of that, like, Frank Frazetta vibes. Yeah. Uh, like the guy who does the Cam FDM. Covers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. He, yeah. Probably the same person. I can see that. In where he was like, I'm going to make Turn it a little more comic books. Uh, but yeah, it looks great. Um, 
I just, I didn't. It's also another floating world. Look, it's like Herb Trimpy. Yes. Um, I love floating world comics. They kind of do a lot of the weird off the wall, you know, 2000 AD style books. Um, so yeah. Which I have to say, um, with West and that and the other floating world and, and Crime Destroyer and all these things, uh, shout out to Lunar. Because there has been a lot of videos in the past that were like we're not excited about the fact that they're, you know, DC like did all the things they did. But Lunar has become an incredible source for a lot of these small presses. Uh, Scout is with them, Ahoy is with them, and now Floating World, um, Hyper Thick, who oh, okay. uh, is with them. Um, a couple of the other nice. really small presses. Uh, every week we're starting to see. Every honestly, truthfully, every week Lunar is picking up another small press that you that doesn't get any recognition um, in the other catalogs or, and giving them recognition. And they're coming in, and honestly, they're putting them a lot of the time even above DC. So it's like, hey, you're coming in and you're looking for these DC books. Well, now you have to scroll through all these small presses yeah. before that. And I absolutely adore that. And the <laughs> we way know you're going to order all 19 Batman, all 19 like, Batman books. Why don't you take a look at these like small press yeah. books, like the the Victorian uh, Christmas book that I talked about last week, really mm -hmm. quickly on the live stream that I found through Lunar. Um, I didn't even find that in Diamond. I didn't find it in my previous catalog. I actually found it on Lunar. And the thing is, is that Lunar, when you go into order, if you click on it, it actually gives you the summary of the book in line. So it doesn't open nice. up a new window. It doesn't do anything. It's like it's in line. Mm -hmm. And you can see the description of the book. And you can see, and it's listed by publisher. So I'm seeing this publisher. is I'm like, oh, this is a small press. Let me check out what they got. And then I can click on it, and I can see that. And another thing Lunar does really well is a lot of times underneath that, you can click on uh, supplemental materials, whether that's ads or additional information about it or an actual copy of the issue. Oh, and okay. so it's really it's really great way to get people who aren't ordering small press books to order small press books. So I just want to give a shout out to Lunar for creating a very user-friendly system to make people want to order small press books. Uh, thank you for that because it is a huge part yes. of uh, who I am as a human. Which means we're going to get a lot of even smaller press books, which is exactly what I want. All the things yes. will come your way. And, and lastly, pick of the week. From <laughs> Not a small press. Not a small press. Number three, technically, overall. Yes. Uh, I, or four, I guess. Image is number three. It's Dark Horse. Dark yes. Horse. And it is Jeff Lemire, who is also not a small name at all, uh, with May's book and The End. I of no May's book, I, I did no not idea. know this going into it, or I would have come prepared with tissues. Yeah, I got to the end of the book, and I was like, "Wait, what? This is it?" I got to the end of the book, and I was trying really hard because I was literally sitting right next to Matt when I read this, <laughs> and I was trying really hard not to cry. Yeah, I was like, "Suck it up, Shannon. It's okay. It's just a comic book." But I was sitting there like. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> it's allergies, I swear. It's just my allergies. It's definitely not COVID, but I just really feel <laughs> a lot of emotions towards this book. Yes, it is the finale, and it, he did it. I mean, God. I one of now. the things that I think Jeff Lemire did with this book, because he does have Andrea Sorrentino, which he did Gideon Falls with, and, uh, and now Primordial. Primordial uh, I feel like this was Jeff Lemire's book where he was like, look, I know you guys love his art, but let's not forget. I'm, I'm also artist. a very talented artist myself. Because um, especially even in this last issue, there was a lot of moments where I'm like, oh, my God. The so art. He does, the art. He this, does yeah. everything. Yeah, he did everything in this one. Um, and it's so fantastic. Um, this book wrapped up really well. Um, so essentially the story is, uh, you have a guy who his daughter passed away, uh, 10 years ago and he's kind of just like life has been, you know, kind of uneventful for him, you know, right, not, life moved on and he did it. Yeah. And he just kind of dwelled in this until he got a, a phone call one night from his daughter who was like, Hey, I may not be dead. Um, you know, hey, you need to come find me. Uh, and he takes off on this journey, and she has a, a, a love for mazes. 
Um, and she kind of set up the city like a maze. Yeah. Um, and oh my gosh, this this book. Uh, I'll show this page. I don't want to go too far into the back half of it. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to give away this ending. This book is honestly, Julie. So one of the things that we do here at Bat City is, as a educational nonprofit, is we write curriculum to help students learn to read, to write, to explore how you interpret literature and things like that. And honestly and truthfully, I can't wait to write a curriculum that explores how to deal with grief uh, through this. Yeah. You know, like the literary analysis of dealing with grief, of and, and just the emotional analysis. Like, you know, we talk about all the time using comic books to help people with emotional development. And this is a great example of how to deal with grief because we do see multiple people dealing with grief. You know, yes. we see his wife who's moved on. She, they got a divorce. She's married someone else. Right. And she does, doesn't understand why he can't move on because for her, moving on was the key to her grief. Right. And we see the lady next door who her dog is lost. And it mm -hmm. seems like it should be a trivial piece of grief. But she's dealing with that and how they connect through that. And then we see him who never moved on. And it's like, what happens if you don't? What happens yeah. if you never address the grief that you're experiencing? If you just let it consume you in a completely, completely and totally. And how do you get back out of that? And, and that was Jeff Lemire. And Jeff Lemire said, and I think we both talked about it, because the letter at the back of issue one was Jeff Lemire saying, I started this book, and now I hope, I, and as I was writing it, I hoped I could find my way back out of the maze. Yeah. Because as he poured himself into this book, it became something that emotionally impacted him enough that he didn't know how he personally was going to get out of this story uh, and feel intact. And, you know, you get your, your labyrinth-ish, like, m you know, like your, mentor, your Minotaur and all of that. You get those references because it is a maze, uh, but it's, it's all embedded in what that grief is. And you're, it, just take your tissues. Yes. And, and again, remember, Dark Horse goes hardcover before they go trade. So if you're Phil, you're very excited about that. But if you're like, I'm going to trade weight don't just come get all the issues right now or ask for a hardcover because that is way too long to wait yeah. for one of the like it, it was on our best of 2021 books yeah. uh and i mean honestly truthfully now it definitely like i feel like he wrapped it up because he really wanted to secure that eisner nod and get it. just give him the eisner nod right yeah. now because it is a fantastic book uh it's so beautiful and seriously i'm i'm mad that i didn't have tissues prepared <laughs> because i didn't know it was only going to be five issues but it is done yeah. now grab your tissues grab all five issues and start reading uh and uh just know that's great we are going to wrap up Picks of the Week by doing a spotlight on local creators. Uh, we don't have a tab for this on our, our slideshow because uh, who knew we were going to have five, like, I think four or five local projects to talk about all at one time. Uh, so first things first, because we've talked about this one a little bit before, uh, Fancy Tom's Future Grim Tells. I wanted to just remind everybody that this exists in the yeah. world, and we still have some free copies up at the front. Uh, from Fancy Tom, we also have his Batman prints on our wall, which makes me it super happy. So they all, I always come in there. I'm like, it looks so great. And you're so great. I love yeah. to stare at them, and uh, mm -hmm. people always ask if they can buy them, and I'm not ready to part with them yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can get your own free copy of this eight-page mini comic book from Fancy Tom, who has actually, I don't know if y'all are ready for this, offered to once things come back down, uh, do the adult comic workshops with me where he would be the one to teach you how to draw. Uh, so if you are interested in those, keep an eye out once things get... Uh, can I have some more wine, too? Uh, once, you guys might as well finish that. I think once things end. get, uh, you know, calmed yep. down in our case numbers, we might see some, some art experience from Fancy Tom, uh, who is an incredible Jesus. artist. <laughs> I'm here for it. That's, that's <laughs> Jesus. Do I kill it? No. Sure, He's, why not? <laughs> It's not like I have to go to work later. Yeah, who cares? It's, you so know. It's just a sip. Uh, <laughs> other amazing, incredible things. I'm going to go this one. We've been talking about Richie Vegas for the longest time and the legend of Ricky Ve Vegas, which this is issue 20, oh. 21. 
Am I wrong? Am I 25. 25. Okay, I was like, well, I know we're in the 20s. 25, uh-huh. and it is the final chapter of The Legend of Richie Vegas. Do not be dismayed. Richie is still making comic books. This is just twen- the 25 issues of Richie Vegas' Legend of Richie Vegas have now come to an end. Uh, do you want to open that up? There's no to. way you cannot open that up. Yeah. Uh, we always reference, like, Girl, Richie's uh, artwork is kind of like, his storytelling is kind of American Splendor esque. Mm-hmm. Uh, but his artwork is done with a ballpoint, like, big pen on paper plates. And then he flattens the plates and puts prints them into these books. So n- rotate and you rotate it. Yeah, you, like, r- like turn the book, like, sideways. And I love it because, in general, a lot of times people struggle with how to read comics. And I love that Richie gives you an arrow of which way to flip your book as you're reading it. Mm-hmm. But this is an incredible story from Richie that's just kind of processing all of the different things that have happened, like, in in his life um, and experiences like he's had. And the artwork on it, we talked about this earlier with, you know, with West, that, like, the the pencil, like, the, the sim- like, simplisticness of drawing that almost makes it more complex. And Richie has definitely highlighted that. You know, he's giving us this one tone like ballpoint pen experience but yet it's so hyper detailed at the Mm -hmm. same time it's a phenomenal uh look at his life through art and uh and we love richie richie is yeah uh, he's one of our he's He's, a member of the posse fam he uh is a bat bat fam member as well and he's a local austin artist and he sells all of these he's super really nice guy i had the chance to interview him Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, we did the... Oh, yeah, you did the panel. Uh, the panel. I forgot about that. He was on the panel talking a little bit about uh, how he, you know, does comics. And I like that he's very anti going the publisher route. Mm-hmm. Where he's like, no, I'll just do it myself. Yeah. Uh, and it's great. And yeah. these are incredibly oversized issues for $5. Yeah. Five dollars. It's what, fifty some odd? 80. Oh. S- 80 pages. Yeah, 70. Usually? Yeah, 80. Yeah. Yep, 80. 80 pages for $5 yeah, right. <laughs> from a, a local creator who is literally pouring his heart and soul and just doing the absolute, like, most detail. Uh, check him out. You absolutely should. Oh, oh, Richie's there. Richie's actually in the comments. Uh, you can uh, you can buy them here at Bad City um, and support Richie. Uh, Richie, we love you. And uh, you can also... Uh, we don't have them in stock, but Richie, if you can... If there's a little place where people should buy your albums from uh you should drop a if there's a like link where they can buy your albums or if there's a place like put that in the comments because richie also does music and he has a new album that came out in november i believe i can't time means nothing to me anymore but i think it was november might be december uh that features my favorite song about sea monkeys ever hey. Uh, so, uh, yeah, check out Richie's books. If you, uh, want to check out some awesome new music, grab some Richie Vegas music. Uh, I believe RichieVegas.com is his website. Yes. Yes, RichieVegas.com. Uh, another amazing, incredible subscriber who also, a member of the Bat Fam, who has recently put something out is we have our own, uh, uh, Blake Chombley, who recently released this book, The Old Man and the Supernova. This is a novel Uh, For sci-fi fans everywhere, this is all about a guy named Leon who escapes from an institution with an old man and a girl named Supernova. And they they are trying to return the journal of the old man's daughter to the old man, and a lot of things are going to happen along the way. And, um... When we do our, one of the things I do when I do writer workshops for adults, not for kids, is I talk about, uh, sometimes for kids, if we have the longer workshops, but the one in my long form workshops, what we talk about is your opening lines and, uh, Blake nails the idea of opening lines, honestly, because his first opening is, I want you to take a moment, just one and think about the sentence before this. At what age did you understand the words on a page? At what age can you read? Can you remember who taught you? Your memory is there. It's a box of uncertainty with only the most important moments in the middle and the least important sports trivia knowledge on top. Can you remember the age? And I think, like, I don't know where this book is going, but I was like, that's the first, like, few sentences of the book. And to start your book with just take a moment 
makes me and he does it so well with short sentences like just take a moment i'm like okay what am i like i'm pausing already and then to wrap like to have the next sentence be just one like you're like okay like i'm on i'm, I'm waiting what am i no. doing and then you're gonna ask me about what it was like to learn to read and so now i'm already in my own memories and it makes you instantly connect with these characters because you're like whatever this is doing I'm already going back into my own mind and thinking about my own memories. And so whatever you put in there next, I'm going to instantly create, like, connect with. Right. Because you've made me go back to my own memories before you've even started telling a story. And uh, that is just, that's exactly the kind of stuff we talk about in our workshop, is how do you get your character, to co your reader to connect from page one, sentence one, paragraph one, whatever you want to talk about. And Blake does a great job of that before taking you on an adventure of like sci-fi and Blake is a huge sci-fi fan I can tell you all the comics he subscribes to if it'll help <laughs> you know whether or not that's the book for you but Blake loves sci-fi and history and this is a great combination of all of those for him um, you can buy copies of it here in the store um, or you can get them at Book People, which I believe are almost sold out. So if you want to grab a copy really? from Book People, That's awesome. um, you can buy it here. You can also buy it on Amazon, wherever you want to get it. Um, grab a copy. It is called The Old Man and the Supernova, and it is by Blake Chombley. Yeah, also really nice, well-packaged book here. Um, yeah, this is this is a really well-done book. Um, I'm excited to read it. Yeah. I, I do like sci-fi, so. Yeah, and, and Blake is is one of those people who absolutely loves to talk about what he's reading. So uh, seeing how he dives into a story is not surprising. Um, lastly, we had uh, Dan Price in the comments earlier today. We told you we had something coming from Dan Price. Uh, Dan digitally released the first issue of his comic this for week. the Kickstarter backers. For Kickstarter backers. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the physical version is coming in February, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Keep your eyes out as long as things <coughs> go down in numbers. We will hopefully be having Dan out for an event for Bigfoot Knows Karate. Yes. Uh, I met Dan Price at... Um, Small Press of Ween. Yes. And it... it took no time i think you were the one that basically was like i was like this is this your book. favorite person on uh, yeah. the planet so yeah just this meet is, him this is gonna be a book that you're gonna love and um so i i met him that day and i went home that night and back to the kickstarter um i got the deluxe edition because there's this really cool cover uh for the deluxe edition um, but yeah, I, I got the uh, digital copy um, in my inbox a couple days ago, and oh my gosh, it is so good. It is such a good first issue. Um, I can't say too much um, because both Dan and Casey were kind of like, hey, if you want to talk about it, just don't spoil anything in the book. Um, there are some twists and turns that come along, um, but it is great the art's really wonderful he uh fights a kung fu uh cthulhu yes and uh it is <clears throat> february i believe it's uh, yes. mid-february that the physical copies will be coming out and like we said as long as we will definitely have it at bat city and as long as uh austin gets out of stage four five, and five yeah. Uh, we will have Dan out. We've already been talk in talks with Dan about the excitement of coming out and coming <clears throat> and signing copies at Big Foot Nose Karate for you guys. So uh, yeah. keep an eye out for how you'll be able to get Big Foot Nose Karate coming up in February. Uh, can you still back the Kickstarter? Do you know? Uh, the Kickstarter is over. Okay. Um, that ended... Um, actually, it ended like a week or two after small press of wing. Okay, so in November. Um, but you'll get a chance to get a physical copy, and then um, they're also going to do it. They're already talking about issue two. Um, I assume that will probably also be a Kickstarter, so if you do get a chance to get a physical of issue one, um, then make sure you're following uh, Dan Price uh, and Casey Allen as well uh, to keep up with. And, and Dan's usually on uh, social media, and I don't know if you're still there, Dan, but I believe Dan's usually on it as like Dan Omite. Yeah, I think it's Dan Omite 139. Yeah, is what it is. it's something nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's 139. Um, and we have these postcards that, uh, if you're going to grab it yeah, again, we have yeah, these yeah. postcards in the store so you can find oh, Dan. Yeah. 
Yeah, Dan- 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 Dynamite one three nine. You can find Dan on social media and kind of give yourself put it on your refrigerator and get a reminder for Bigfoot Nose Karate. Uh, grab one of these postcards when you come in, so you mm-hmm. remember to to look keep an eye out on that. And it's got all of Dan's social medias and things like that on there. Yeah, and Dan. Extremely nice dude. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, we love Dan, and Dan's a big supporter of Bad City. Uh, has been at a lot of our events in the past, and we love Dan. So, um, all right, we're going to talk about some in stocks really quickly so we can get you closer to that prize that's at the end of the show. Um, also, once again, just to thank you to all of our local creators for allowing us to support you and uh, put your books in our shop. We love that. A lot of great creators in the city of Austin. Dude, I know. There's so many amazing ones. There's an entire wall for Megan Hutchison Gates in our store if you need to know about how many great creators live in our town. Uh, uh, All right. Dark Knights of Steel number three is out. This is Game of Thrones in the DC Universe. Uh, The Eisner winning Black Widow is back by Kelly Thompson for issue 13. Uh, Girl Scouts Stone Ghost. Uh, dude, can you open that really fast and just show yes. them the incredibleness that is the Girl Scouts uh, art? We yeah, Jim Mafood, uh, wonderful creator. Also, there's T-shirts on the back that I'm just not noticing. Oh, uh oh, Phil's in trouble. Um, uh, yeah, I always like to wear uh the kind of off the wall T-shirts. But yeah, Jim Mafood, great art. Girl Scouts, great book. Uh, Stray Dogs Dog Days. I didn't put this in the books that were hot new titles. You know it's a hot new yeah. title. I didn't need to tell you. This is a, it's a, I like your way of saying it. It's a who's who of all the dogs stolen in Stray Dogs. Uh, yeah, yeah. And kind of just an intro to the fact that we're probably going to get more Stray Dogs. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Echo Lands 5. Um, Joshua Williamson. Uh, not Joshua Williamson. No, not at all. J.H. Williams the third. Uh, some crazy super art. Uh, high concept fantasy. Uh, a lot of pop culture references in there. Uh, it's wonderful. Yeah, Joshua. You just have to read it sideways. Joshua Williamson had Batman out this week, but I don't have it anymore because y'all are loving his Batman. Dark is Hole. It good? Yeah, it's good? I don't know. I haven't read it, but everybody else is loving it because I'm selling out. Uh, Dark Hold <laughs> Omega is. I can't get it. Everybody, we sell out every week. I don't know, so it's apparently good. Y'all are so people like Batman. People like good. Batman, and they're loving Joshua Williamson. Uh, Dark Hold Omega. Uh, Steve Orlando wrapping up the Dark Hold little mini saga. Uh, from Marvel. Two Moons issue 8. This is a great story about a Native American uh, person who is working during the Civil War. For, uh, and a lot of crazy stuff happens. And it's so good. If you're not reading Two Moons, I think we might have trades of Volume 1. If we don't, we can probably order more. Because it is a great story. Um, Captain America Iron Man issue 2. It's one of the Villains Reigns variants. I actually like the regular cover better. I'm going to reach that really fast because it's a better cover. Um, That's it. It's right there. It's a cool cover. I love it. Trying to figure out why they're advertising the new Joy Way album. Oh, good question. Huh? They have a deal with them or something. Do they really? They've been doing cover or ads for two years for Joy Wave singles. All right. Oh. Dune, A Whisper of Caladan Seas, number one. So we've got another Dune issue, another Dune series coming out from Boom Studios. Uh, just tell me when the Juni Prison covers come out. I think there are a couple. Oh, there will be. Yeah. Uh, X-Men issue six with a Polaris variant. I love that Polaris is getting some love. Uh, the the underappreciated child of Magneto. Yes. Who is actually a legitimate child of Magneto and doesn't get the love for being that. Uh, Popstar Assassin issue 3 from Behemoth is yes. out. Uh, Elvis Impersonator turned uh, assassin. Yeah. Tangled River. This is Michael Cohen. Uh, uh, it's just one, another one of those, like, you can open it up. It's another one of those, like, person, single person working stories. Uh, just, just, you know, like, some nice small press legitimate, like, yeah, it's Story, kind of an interesting art, uh, futuristic blend. sci-fi book. Uh, it's a lot, though. That it's that first issue was a lot to unpack. Yeah, you were like, I don't think I read issue one. I was like, you did. Yeah, it was and a then lot. I started <laughs> to flip through this one. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was over I remember one. issue one. <laughs> yeah. It's a live press. A li- hey. It's a live? That's the name of it. I'm, al- I'm alive. 
Did you know about It's Alive Press? I did not know about It's Alive Press, but now I want to start my own <laughs> It's Alive but with a space in between uh and lie. Uh, Electra Black, White, and Blood is out. Um, dude, guys, Electra's freaking Daredevil right now, and we're not talking about that enough. And it's been like 10 issues since that happened, so it's not a spoiler anymore. But uh, Electra's freaking Daredevil, this is going back. We're just kind of focusing on Daredevil or Electra as a character. This is the same way that, like, you know, Deadpool and Carnage. I love that it was Deadpool and Carnage and, like, Wolverine that got these black, white, and bloods. And then they're like, you know who else is super violent? Electra. Yeah. Like, you, we should do that. And uh, we get Charles Sewell. You get uh, Declan Shavley. Uh, Mark Bagley art. Mark Bagley. Uh, dude, this is... It was great. I read a couple of the stories out of here already, oh, and it's just... Yeah. Dude, Electra's a badass. Oh, she totally is. Like, if is. you forgot Electra was a badass, first of all, she's Daredevil, so how did you forget? And second of all... This book will remind you. It's an anthology-style story. You can pick it up anywhere, anytime. But this is issue one. Just grab them all because she's amazing. Also, you know what I want from this? A Kevin Eastman cover. Ooh. Give me Kevin Eastman drawing Electra. I'm going to look and see if that's a thing. That's oh, it has me. to be. It needs to be. Uh, Inferno, Inferno issue four. The end of Inferno. Uh, if you're reading it, you know that it's amazing. I just love these feature moves. I actually loved all of the covers of Inferno issue four. There was one where Mystique was like half her and half Destiny. Oh, yeah, that and looked cool. I sold out of that so fast. It was the the Vega <laughs> variant. It was great. But Marvel uh, art. <laughs> Ordinary Gods <laughs> issue was something that we're on. What is it? Issue six. six. Uh, this is Kyle Higgins. We don't talk about that enough. If you're a fan of Radiant Black, you and you want some like gods taking on like gods throughout history now needing to be like stopped again because they're gonna screw everything up. This is it. Uh, Power Rangers mm. Universe. Uh, this is a spot foil. Um, it's Super cool. fantastic. Ram, it's I awesome. saw you just joined in uh, recently. You've got Power Rangers Universe in your box. Don't you worry, buddy. A foil one. I don't know if you got a foil one, so Ram, if you want a foil one, let me know. Uh, Spawn 326. Did 25. the book that... 325? Oh, just kidding. I was reading the back. Yeah. Uh, the book that will not ever end. I love Todd McFarlane the for keeping with it. The longest running independent right? book Book ever. of all time. Dude, Todd, keep it going. You know what? Todd McFarlane, you do you, man. I love it. I love how proud you are of what you do and Thanks. that you're still doing it, Todd. Uh, and thanks for being a champion for indie books. We're going to talk about you in a second. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 84. Four. Thank you, because we had two issues come out uh, oh, this week. Uh, I love... Wait, I like what the cover. fuck? Why is he calling him Benjamin? Because... Is it Ben Riley? It is Ben Riley. We're having Ben. Get it out. Ben. Get it, out. it has Moving been on. Ben Riley. He's coming out with his own series. And he's getting his own series. Ben Riley is back. He's going to be in the MCU. I don't no know one, about that. No but one liked Ben Riley the first time around. Well, they do now. They love what? him now. What the fuck I'm is not happening? I was like Andrew Garfield <laughs> five years ago either, but you're all here oh, now. What the fuck? As somebody who has always loved Andrew Garfield, I'm offended. Um, they love him. They Yes, they and love they like Ben Riley West now. Too. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, well. <laughs> I fucking love Wally West. Don't you dare. That's my flash. <laughs> Don't be an and asshole. Ben <laughs> Riley's your Spider Man, dude. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. I don't like Peter at all, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> Dr. Afra, uh, uh, I'm not watching Book of Boba Fett, but apparently all of you who are are freaking out about Dr. Afra right now. In case you didn't know, she's still got a series going on, so you should be reading it. Uh,. Brett said, uh, I only like Ben Riley as Scarlet Spider. And Scott said, don't worry, it won't last. <laughs> oh, of course not. No, but he's get, that's because he's getting his own series. We're in this interim for Spider-Man. Why? Post Nick Spencer, they've been like playing with the Spider-Man thing. We've been on this Ben Riley thing, and then Ben Riley's getting his own series, and then Spider-Man will probably come back to being Peter Parker for the rest of eternity. Look, Marvel, here's the thing. If you're going to put out a Ben Riley book, at least bring Silk back. Like, let's Silk is more getting th another series. Oh, okay, then. Cool, cool. <laughs> 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 Fuck whatever you want with Ben Riley. Ben, fun. yeah, Sil Indies. Silk is right. Silk is getting another series right, that's fine. again, that's again, fine. again, because she just had one and now she's getting another one. Let's do an ongoing. Let's yeah, we do. These we do need another. Bullshit. I think it is Come another on. miniseries. Silk needs an ongoing. Let's just be real here. Uh, uh, Arkham City: The Order of the World sleeper book. All the people who have read it have come in and been like, this is my favorite book that DC's putting out right now, so apparently we need to be reading this book. Isn't Dan Waters Homesick Pilots? Isn't that the same guy? 
Yes. Yeah. Holy shit. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, so we're all gonna stop this live stream and start reading Arkham City. How many issues is it? So far, Two? we're three. Two, three what's what yeah. is that? Well, yeah. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, no, oh, this is the new one. Yeah. Four. Four. We're oh. four issues in. Holy I have six. all four. Homesick pilot fans. I have all four. Uh, don't you worry. Crush and Lobo issue eight. This was the end of Crush and Lobo, and this might actually be my one of my last copies of that issue. Uh, the Joker, a puzzle box, puzzle box by Matthew Rosenberg. Uh, all of you picking up all these Joker books and Batman books, not picking up enough Matthew Rosenberg in your life. Uh, Justice League Incarnate issue three of five. Justice League Infinity based on the Justice League animated series. Um, I mean, I'm just here for that. I love oh, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, DC presents Soul Plumber. If you are a fan of Lost Last Podcast on the left, this is their comic book. Uh, Superman, Son of Kal-El. You love it. I don't need to tell you that you love it. This is number six, and Jonathan's doing great and wonderful things, and Tom Taylor is writing it, and you love him because he's wonderful and perfect, and I kind of want to hug him. Tom Taylor, not Jonathan. Uh, <laughs> I'm both. Yeah, I'm or both. both. I would hug Jonathan. Yeah. Actually, that's true, too. It could hurt, but yeah. It could hurt. But I mean, he probably knows how to contain his hugs by now. Mm. Maybe not. I don't know if he's a teenager. Uh, World of Kal-El, issue two World of, of six. World of Krypton. Just kidding. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. Uh, World of Krypton, issue two uh, of six. It's always about Kal-El. Shang-Chi, issue seven. This is Shang-Chi versus the entire Marvel Universe. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah like Clark. Yeah, this is Shang-Chi Shang fighting everybody. Uh, I'm kind of in. Kind of in. I, honestly, truly, Shang-Chi can do whatever he wants. Uh, I love him. I love him so much. Uh, Wastelanders Doom, number one. They're all one-shots. It's Wastelanders. If you've read the Wastelanders universe, we're back there. This is kind of all your old man people. Yeah, old man everyone. Old man everyone, but now you got a Doom issue. All the old men. Uh, Phil's favorite writer, Cullen Bunn, with Basilisk, <laughs> issue six. Uh, it's an interesting concept. We'll s it's still ongoing, so maybe Colin Bunn is taking his time and actually developing that book. If he cuts everything else out and just focuses on that, that's cool. Doctor Who, Empire of the Wolf, uh, from Titan Comics. I'm actually, this is the Doctor Who series I have been most interested in. This is issue two. Uh, I can't say anything about it, though, guys, because Phil hasn't gotten to the Bad Wolf storyline. I'm almost there. It's episode 12, and I'm on eight or nine. I need Phil to get there because I need to talk about Bad Wolf so bad. But if you do know Doctor Who, this is, the, you need to read this book. Look, it's the thing is, I don't like to have too many existential moments Oh, Doctor Who is life. entirely Doctor existential Who, After moments. every episode, I'll go sit on a bench in a park and I'm like, does any of this matter? And so I used to sit outside with my friend uh, when I was re watching Doctor Who and she had, we were watching Doctor Who together and we would literally sit outside on my patio and we would just talk about what we saw in the last like five episodes of Doctor Who at a time. Like, and it was in the early days, like, David Tennant had just kind of started, and Matt Smith didn't, wasn't a doctor yet, and we would just sit there, and we were like, oh my god, like, Doctor Who, man, like, I can't believe this happened. Yeah. Dude, it's like reading comic books. Doctor Who is great. I love Doctor Who. Uh, Evil Ernie issue two is back. This is Chaos Comics, like, through Dynamite Comics for Evil Ernie. I just love this Nirvana homage. And uh, best joke ever was from, uh, I sent this to one of our Bat Fan members, BJ, and I was like, hey, did you see this Nirvana homage? Because he's like a huge fan. And he goes, the only way I'm down with that is that the creator of this comic sues uh, Dynamite for one, for uh, putting them on the cover, putting Evil Ernie on the cover. And I was like, I will hold out hope for that for you, buddy. Uh, Hellboy Bone of Giants. Hellboy's can go that is my comic book news. Did you see that there is a new, actually, Mike Mignola, not Hellboy related book coming soon? I think it did. Like in Planet in Space yeah, Boy yeah, yeah. or Space? Yeah, so yeah I uh, Radio sp uh, Space yes. Radio Space Man? Yeah, that. Yeah. I thought of you and I great. almost sent it to you because, uh, and then I was like, no, I'm just going to ask him on the live stream and put him on the spot. Yeah. I saw it in the previous catalog and I was like, yeah, I'm going to read this. Uh, speaking of long running uh, creators, Mike Millar, Magic Order. 
uh, issue. Mike yeah, do it. <laughs> Mike Millar being Mike Millar. Yeah. Uh, Magic issue 10 by Jed McKay. We forget to talk about the fact that Jed McKay, who you all love at Marvel for his Moon Knight and Black Cat, is also writing Magic the Gathering comics for Boom. <laughs> I love that shit. Oh, school. the thumb, the yeah. thumb holes Dude, on a hoodie. Yeah, Dude, I did that shit in high school. I loved it. If so. you can't see him, but Matt is wearing a Taskmaster Taskmaster hoodie from the Black Widow movie that has uh, thumb holes on the sleeves. Marjorie Finnegan, Temporal Criminal Criminal Issue Eight, I believe. Eight, eight of eight. eight. This is the end. Oh man, I didn't know it was the end, and I skipped that book this week. I gotta go back and read it. It looks uh, great. It's, it's one I do want to read. Honestly, it's Garth Ennis writing for AWA Upshot. It's all about a girl who has the ability to travel through time, and she makes all the wrong choices, and her sister is a time cop, and they end up uh, working together to stop Marjorie's evil exes from destroying the world. And her best friend is Velociraptor! I mean, come on. I was sold when her best friend was... I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm kind of out on this book. And then she goes to prison. And she's like, hey, it's my best friend. I've been thinking forever. And then they show her best friend. It's a fucking velociraptor. And I was like, dude, this book is awesome. I'm sold. Garth Ennis, way to draw me back in. Uh, Nita Hawk's Nightmare Blog. This is for those of you who um, were reading Philadelphia. This is a spinoff of that. If you weren't reading Philadelphia, just read Nita Hawk's blog, Nightmare Blog because it's fantastic. Uh, Once in Future, issue 23, Kieran Gillen uh, is better than me as a writer, and that's all you need to know. Uh, the Sword of Hyperborea from the World of Hellboy. I actually don't know what the Sword of Hyperborea is, but apparently it's something that Hellboy fans do know. Maybe all of them. Uh, Star Trek the Mirror... Well, his name goes on the, all of the <coughs> Hellboy books. Yeah, uh, Star Trek the Mirror War. war. Uh, bleh, I cannot mirror say war. that. Mirror War. Mirror war. <laughs> I don't know. Guys, I have like five glasses on. I don't <laughs> we, know. I'll say this. We had, uh, when I was here on Wednesday, we had someone call and they're like, hey, do you guys have Star Trek books? And I was like, I don't think they make Star Trek comics anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then I walk back here, and I'm like, oh, shit, they do. They do, <laughs> and we do still order them. So if you're a fan no. of Star Trek, despite what Phil tells you on a Wednesday, I do have them in stock. And I also have the old ones if you're looking for them. So call and ask for Shannon. Actually, just in general, if you're looking for a book call and it's not a key, call and ask for me. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you my best. <laughs> Look, if... if if anything, usually when people call and they're like, do you have this? I'm like, I don't know. But, I mean, if you want to come down here, I appreciate you know, you never that. know. That's, like, that's, if you want to dig through these boxes, I mean. That's fair. That's fine. Especially if it's a backstock issue, I appreciate it. You no. know, that's, that happens. Uh, Walking Dead Deluxe issue 30. Oh, Walking Dead Deluxe is all about putting the Walking Dead in color because Walking Dead fans don't have color issues. And apparently you're not supposed to color in the comics yourself. So, here we are. Oh, I thought these were coloring books. Dude, okay, so I have a friend who literally was like, the, her, and I'm sorry because she watches this show, but it's past her bedtime, so she's probably not watching it right now, uh, but she was always, she actually always asked if she could color in her Scott C Pilgrim books, and so when the, I constantly was like, no, I don't think you should, and then when the color issues came out, I was like, please go buy the color edition, <laughs> <laughs> and don't color in your non-colored, and now you can't find the black and white issues of Scott, the of compendiums of Scott Pilgrim anywhere, so. I do hear that they are going to do another uh, reprinting of them though. Ooh, of the black and white ones? That's yes. good because they keep doing reprintings of the color ones and I'm like I just, I, you know the black and white ones. You know what sucks is I keep buying all the reprints and they're all the same book and they're all in color but they keep packaging them differently and I'm like well these are different covers. Dude, that's Scott Pilgrim. I'll always get my money to Scott, Scott Pilgrim. Pilgrim. I do not it's, care, yeah. It's true. If, do you, if you have a book that no matter how many prints they would make of it, you would buy, like, drop that in the comments. Because I'm curious, like, what book people are, like, I would 100% buy a million copies of that. Yeah. Like, I don't know. What would it be for you, Matt? Would it be Watchmen? No. No? Because I don't buy all those printings. That's true. What would you buy a million prints of? New this, Gods. This is going to take some time. Yeah, I, need you I to think do about have that. a couple of copies of New Gods. You have different versions. I'm trying yeah. to think of books I know you have a, a couple of copies of, and I know New Gods is one of them. Dark Knight Returns was another one for me. Mm -hmm. They keep putting out different hardcovers and slip cases, and yeah, absolute. I haven't even bought that one yet. 
Because I'm like, I think I... Someone came over and was in my room once, and they were like, why do you have so many copies of this one book? I was like, I love it. You know? Nigel said he'll relieve you of one of your extra copies of Scott Pilgrim, so now I think you should lock no. your room no. when you leave it. <laughs> uh, those are actually in a... Most of them are in a storage unit. Uh, that you will never get access to, Nigel. Brett said volume Venom volume. I didn't know you had a storage unit with comic books in it. This changes everything, Phil. Actually, it's not mine. It's my mom's. <laughs> <laughs> Brett said Venom volume four would be his, and Chad, of course, said a lot of versions of Green Lantern, Green Arrow. I believe that, Chad. Uh, I expected it to be. <laughs> yeah, Chad said shocker. I know. I was like, I expected it to be something Green Lantern. And they've reprinted those a few times. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The, the Denny O'Neill stuff. Mm-hmm. If they made a bunch of copies of the first appearance of Mr. Freeze, I feel like Matt would have that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause and X-Men 101. X-Men 101. That's a good one, too. But not, like, a full run of anything? There's not, like, a series that you would you would have to buy? I'd buy a New Mutants. Yeah? A, a, a bunch a of series? Version. Yeah. A new version. Yeah. I feel like it... Honestly, and we already do, so I feel like if they had multiple printings of Wind, I would probably buy multiple printings of Wind. We sold uh, out of that hardcover fast. And that hardcover was so pretty. I bought that so hardcover pretty. quickly. I was like, this is nice. And you know, uh... Yeah, gone. Yeah. There, what, yeah, Willow the Wisp from Megan. If they made more oh, versions yeah. of that, I Ooh. would buy all of the Willow the Wisp versions from Megan. And we do have all of the single issues, the original trade, and the new trade of Rockstars. So, you know, anything <laughs> Megan, apparently, I would buy in abundance. I have a problem. But I love you, best friend. <laughs> um, we have some trades. Speaking of trades, we yes. have some. Um, I had some kids come in this week that didn't know that Marvel was doing uh, Marvelverse trades, which is a really cool thing. Uh, Marvel is notoriously bad at getting out collections of comics before and or after their shows come out or movies come out that are connected to it. But they have been really good at getting uh, these Marvelverse books out. And so they just put out one for Morbius. <laughs> we also have a Spider-Man one, a Loki one. I brought Morbius because I was ready for the laugh. Uh, which also, movie was delayed again. Yeah, till April. Till April. <laughs> uh, so once March comes, it'll push it back until so whatever. Matt has a secret hope slash uh, fan belief that maybe they keep pushing it back because they're going to cast somebody other than Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're, re re they're reshooting the whole, movie. the whole movie. Just waste more money. Like Sonic, with the redesign of Sonic. Yeah. They put so, out the trailer. Okay, but there's a huge difference between a slight CGI no. change to No, no. there's not. The cost of CGI is the same as cost. That was faked. That has to have been what? with how much the cost of CGI and the time well, that it no, takes for CGI. Well, no, because they didn't shoot the whole movie with that character design. They had just shot the trailer, I believe. But how would you have finished that entire movie? Yeah, that the movie fast? came out CGI like four months later. CGI takes years to yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, it nah, takes at least a not, year. Not in this day and age. Yeah. I think the guy that also, went to school for animation is Also, not you're going to replace Jared Leto? The guy? Academy Award nominated? Sexual predator <laughs> Jared Leto? Yeah. We've canceled everybody else. If James Franco was canceled and Jared Leto wasn't. True. Okay, now let me ask you this, though. They recast Jared Leto with James Franco. Are you more or less excited to see I'm more still people? not excited. He's <laughs> a better actor. He is a. <laughs> I just a, I'm still not excited. we we need to get a not like a, a, a just a different actor. He's the laughing stock of America. You know, honestly and truthfully, they cast Oscar Isaacs as Moon Knight. I actually would have been more excited for Oscar Isaacs as Morbius than Moon Knight. Mm. But I'm I'm also still on my I wanted Ross Marquan for Moon Knight. But I think I think Oscar Isaacs will do a great job, don't get me wrong. But Ross Marquan is an impressionist, so I would have loved to see how he played a character who has dids. Uh, whereas Oscar Isaacs, I'm I'm still uh, waiting to see somebody who I'm waiting to see Oscar Isaacs do multiple personalities in general in all of his roles, but I think that Oscar Isaacs would have been a, a great Morbius, um, and also is not Jared Leto. So uh, I mean, I feel like if they just want to cancel the movie at this point, they could I just would do that. Be disappointed. They could I'd, just do I'd that. Be like that's fine. Sure. Do we I'm need like, Morbius? Does anyone really care and about I, a Morbius I liked movie? the idea of Sony like being like, hey, we can't have a Spider-Man right now, so we're just going to make some Spider-Man villain movies to keep our rap, right? Morbius? I was okay with that. 
Because they also have cra- Craven on the... Dude, make me up. The fact that you had Felicity Jones lined up to be Black Cat and you didn't do it, which allegedly, according to the internet, and I never believe anything on the internet, but according to the internet, yesterday they announced that Andrew Garfield would get an Amazing Spider-Man 3, which none of you deserve. Um, see the beginning of the we show where I talk... Though. No, I am I the... Don't. I love Andrew Garfield. We... I have been berated in this in the store for the last like five months about how Andrew Garfield is my favorite Spider-Man and uh, up, in, up until recently I was berated in the store for that decision um, and yet yeah, he's getting and even I as somebody who like I'm Andrew Garfield is my favorite Spider-Man I don't really think that we need another Amazing Spider-Man. You know what we need? Honestly, Sony if you're making another if you're going to make an Amazing Spider-Man movie I want it to be like hey I'm done. But there's this kid who just recently got bit by a different spider who suddenly ben has Riley. powers. And his name is Miles Morales. <laughs> and I'm going to train him to take over in my place. Sony, if you wanted to do that, that would be a great plan. Just If you're going to have a live action Spider-Man, just make it uh, the freaking Miles Morales movie. And just, if we don't, you know, I love Andrew No, because then that's going to overshadow into the Spider-Verse. And I would rather them keep the Miles stuff in the Spider-Verse. Yeah, but we need a live action. We need a live Down action. Down the road. We Down need a live road. action Spider- uh, Miles Morales. We'll get there. We, we'll get there. Yeah. I'm in no rush. I And, and you know, we can have, we, we have forever. But, you know, we've had a lot of freaking Peter Parker. And, I mean, that's been since 2000 and 2, 2000. We don't... I mean, that's 21 years of Peter Parker movies. Yeah. Like, it's time. Let's have Miles... It's time for Miles to get his... It's time. Yeah. Uh, and I, I... I like Miles. And I think it's... It, it's a good... It's a good time to segue into Miles as our main Spider-Man. And stop folks... Because the MCU has Peter. The yeah. MCU has Peter. Sony, build your... Build your Miles verse. Build it all up. And yeah, Into the Spider-Verse, that cartoon was phenomenal. So you know what? capitalize on it in Sony and make a live action and do a good job. Do a good job. I, I want to make sure you heard that part, Sony, and make a, a Miles movie. But so we're getting a fucking Craven the Hunter solo movie. Why? What is the fucking... Because they want to keep their rights, so they're making movies. Somebody today... And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name names because you know who you are. And I were talking about the Amazing Spider-Man movies, and they were like, "Yeah, but the villains were ridiculous. They were like the lizard was doing this and this and this, and then you had the Green Goblin." I go, "Okay, we're talking about making adaptations of the 1960s Spider-Man comics, and they were spot on, like really good adaptations. So yeah." The villains were ridiculous. Don't come at me with your the Marvel like oh my god these movies were ridiculous like the mo- the comic books weren't. The 60s comics for Spider-Man were ridiculous. So of course the movies had ridiculous villains because yeah. if you're gonna and they were like oh we don't need comic books don't need the comic book movies don't need to be you can modernize that part of it. I'm like, hey, you can't pick and choose. You want accurate to your comics, you're getting yeah. ridiculous villains. Speaking of ridiculous, Marvel Master Mighty Marvel Masterworks, Fantastic Four I Volume these Two. These, these are great. pocket size, not really. They're backpack size. They are the Marvel Masterworks done in a smaller form in a paperback version. Um we love them. We collect them. I know your roommate collects them. Uh-huh. And they all come with the original covers or the Michael Cho covers, which uh, your roommate collects the original, and uh, this the original, and cover? and my husband collects the Michael Cho covers. I don't uh, even want to see the Michael Cho covers. See, they're beautiful. They are absolutely beautiful. It's all about that classic. Uh, but this is a great way if you're like epic collections are too much, Marvel masterworks are insanely too much. This is a great way to get a backpack size version of the different volumes. And now you too can read Jack Kirby and Stan Lee's um, Fantastic Four, where Sue Storm passes out around every corner. Yeah, but this is eleven we said through volume twenty. Two. Yeah, this is volume two, so it's eleven through twenty, uh, and the first <laughs> annual. Yeah. Um, but I think this is great for for fifteen ninety nine. Yeah, you're gonna get smaller pages, but they're still colored. You know, you're gonna still get the nice 
looking Silver Age Marvel, and um, I actually really like the Fantastic Four, the early ones. Um, outside of not being able to write Sue Storm, um, I feel like like this is my Fantastic Four. I got into the Fantastic Four because of these early issues. Um, the most important thing the Fantastic Four did in the early issues was introduce the Inhumans. Yes. And you don't, you don't get that far in this. No, you don't. you got to wait till you get Not to the 45 and 46. Yeah. Volume uh, 5. Huh? Volume 5. Volume 5. Chad said there is a Thor one that is coming out soon of the Marvel uh, Mighty Masterworks. And Nigel said uh, Kevin Eastman is writing and drawing Elektra in issue 4 of the Black, White, and Blood. So I will sign you up for that, Phil. There you go. Um... Project Patron. Hey, Nigel, the trade came out the week after we couldn't remember the name of the book that you loved. Uh, <laughs> Steve Orlando writing, what would have happened if in the 90s when Superman lost to Doomsday instead of uh, the reign of the Superman, what would happen if the government actually created a uh, robotic Superman and pretended like Superman never died? Uh, Steve Orlando, who is a huge DC Comics fan, uh, definitely explored that concept and honestly and truthfully this was exactly what I needed out of that story. Way better. Uh, war uh, the un un unicorn war corns. War corns. War corns. <laughs> yes. I was like war of the unicorns. No that's not uh, right at all. Source Point Press. This was a four issue mini series. Uh, there's also a one shot which I'm actually kind of curious uh, if this also has the one shot. Maybe not. Uh, Phil's a big fan. Doesn't look like it. Uh, I really like this. It's basically uh, if unicorns went to boot camp and then to war. Uh, it's it's been it. it's bonkers. You know, it's a lot of fun. Great art. Naomi, uh, now called season one because this is uh, we are about to see the CW show of Naomi come to life. Brian Michael Bendis' original character for the young adult line of DC Wonder. Uh, and if you didn't read Naomi, honestly and truthfully, this is the only way you're going to do it because issue one of Naomi is super expensive. Um, grab that is one. Is it really? Mm-hmm. bucks. Hundred bucks. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. You know those first appearances of Brian Michael Bendis original characters. They they don't mess around. I know. Stray Dogs Volume One. If you were excited about Stray Dogs Dog Days, this is your chance to read the original Stray Dog story. Let's be honest. There's gonna be more Stray Dogs. There has to be more Stray Dogs. We haven't solved the mystery yet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. The house from Dark Horse. This is what happens if a bunch of World War II members ended up in a haunted house. Uh, lots of crazy things. Their own stuff that haunts them comes back to get them. This is uh, Drew Zucker, who is the artist of Canto, mm. uh, doing the art. Which you know, I may or may not like uh, Canto a little bit, in case you haven't heard. Uh, no One's Rose, back in stock. This is from Vault. This is uh, We Screwed Up the World, as we so often do. Um, and we are living in pods, and it deals with classism through those environmental pods. It's like Biodome, but uh, mm -hmm. if it was a serious movie. And it's a beautiful book. It's a beautiful um, freaking book. I really like this one. I think I may have randomly picked it up here, or you had recommended the I recommended Actually, you know what? I think it was on a live stream. It was on... I talked about it a lot. And I was like, yeah, but I'll take one of those. Um, and, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Read it. It's great. And lastly, for $10, you can read Volume 1 of Saga. One of the only ones that went hot and didn't go up from nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. So, Volume 1 of Saga from Brian K. Vaughn. This is the first... Five, six issues? Five issues. Five issues of Saga for ten bucks. Saga comes back January 29th. It's the book. I'm going to be live uh, tweeting and doing videos of me reading Saga's first 54 issues prior to issue 55 coming out on January 29th. I'm going to Twitch stream it. I'm going to sit there and you can watch me read all. Just watch you reading it. Issues. Yeah, that's basically what's going to happen. You're going to see me discuss how I have no idea what the hell is going on in Saga. I am not a sci-fi fan, but we're going to find out. It's, it's 
Romeo and Juliet. I, that's what I've heard from, uh, and kind of what I got out of the first volume. So I'm curious to see where it's going to go. And there's a cat. And you know you always Lion get me cat. when there's a cat. Oh, Lion Cat's great. So I'm here, I'm here for the cat. And, again, I read volume one after our book club. And I was like, ooh, we are taking down sex traffickers. I'm also in for anything that's like sex trafficking is bad. Let's blow up the entire planet of sex traffickers. I'm in for that. So congratulations, Saga. We're going to see what happens when I read the entire thing. Um, so Chad says, I'm excited for Saga to come out, but I have those deluxe edition hardcovers and didn't get any single issue. So to get the first return issue would drive my OCD wild. The first issue of Saga is like how much money now if you wanted to get issue one of Saga? They're nine hundred nine eight. Nine hundred dollars for That's a nine it? eight of issue one of Whatever. Saga, and it's in the CGC's lab at that point, so mm -hmm. you ain't reading it either way. But it's a thousand dollars, so. Or an image first for a dollar. Or an image first for a dollar, which I think we have. So congratulations, uh, Chad. We're gonna talk about comic news. So if you've got my uh, what's coming out this week, Chad, that'll be great because. Um, the most important comic book news. So the trivial comic book news is that No Way Home is now the sixth largest domestic box office ever. It has passed Titanic. No. In domestic box dethroned office numbers. Titanic. It has dethroned Titanic. So No Way Home is that huge, which congratulations comic books. I just want to say that's a huge win for comic book movies and comic books that we are now in that caliber of of uh rain but honestly and truthfully that is trivial news compared to the most important comic book industry news that we have to say which is that after a seven to two vote the image comic employees are now completely unionized it is the first union in the comic book industry ever uh, comic book, if you don't know comic book writers, uh, comic book artists, all, all comic book letters, there's not a single union up until now in comic books. While we have all of the, like, Screen Actors Guild and all of these unions for Hollywood writers, uh, Hollywood writers have a union. We have unions in every form of art except for comic books because they've never been taken seriously. The employees of Image came together and, uh, attempted to get a union and it passed so congratulations image for creating the comic book workers united union and creating the first ever union in comic books let's hope that this expands to comic book creators uh and comic book employees overall yes scott said that is huge it is absolutely huge i am so excited to see um, this happen and I hope that this leads to health care and benefits for comic book creators at some point because there is nothing protecting our comic book creators at all um, I was talking about with one of our, our subscribers was here and the the uh, inker for Miles Morales was shopping in the store yesterday uh, the current oh, wow. inker for a couple of upcoming issues for Miles Morales uh, and a couple of past issues Miles Morales was in the store and I was like, hey, how long does it take you to ish ink an issue? And, and he said, you know, I get off of work at 5.30 every night, and then I start inking. And it takes me until about 1.30 or 2.30 in the morning to finish what I'm working on each night. Uh, and that's about a page. Wow. And, and he, you know, has the whole conversation with me. And then uh, I, and then the... He leaves, you know, he buys comics, he leaves or whatever. And the, the subscriber that was sitting there was like, I can't believe that the inker of Miles Perales has to have a day job until 5.30 at night, 6 o'clock at night, and then starts inking the comics. And I said, oh, most comic creators still have day jobs unless they're, right. you know, Don Cates, Brian Michael Bendis, Chip like Zdarsky. Chip Zdarsky, like those big names that everybody <clears throat> knows in and almost out of the industry like but everybody in the industry knows those names if you don't know the name of the creator off the top of your head they probably still have some form of day job yeah and the ones that you do know might have had a day job until like last week um the the creator of home was like this is the end of home the last issue of home was like i'm quitting my job and i'm terrified because this is the first time that I'm going to try to just do comics. Just just comics. Yeah. And just writing. And it's and we're still there. 
We're still at the point where comic creators don't have a safety net and they need those day jobs to give them health insurance, to give them a, a steady income and all of those th- days off and things like that, which of course you don't really get a day off day off because the day you take off from your work, you're catching up on your, right. your comic book work. But I'm hoping that by having just the employees of Image unionize we're going to see that slowly expand to register that comic books much like the hollywood creators deserve to have a union and deserve to have protection and deserve to have health insurance from their publishers and things like that so um this is a a huge huge first movement in protecting uh, our comic book creators and seeing them continue to grow. So, um, congratulations to the Image Comics employees. Um, and here's to, I wish I still had wine because here's to whatever that entails for the future. Um, and Chad said, availability is subject to change comics out this week. Uh, Undiscovered 18. Thank you, Chad. I was just wondering when the next Undiscovered Country was coming out. Justice League versus Legion of Superheroes. Your team. Uh, number what? one, Justice League versus Legion of Superheroes. <laughs> Uh, we ride Titans, number one. Finally, I honestly, truthfully think that a uh, vault got hit with the paper shortages. Finally, Chad, uh, we've been talking about vault having some slow go. No holds barred, number two. If you didn't hear about no holds barred, that is a behemoth title about uh, William Shakespeare and one of his pages, basically having an Adam West, Burt Ward kind of experience, but it's all told in Shakespearean dialogue. Um, Bat Fam, Department of Truth number 15, Daredevil, Woman Without Fear number one. Congratulations to Electra for finally getting uh, your own Daredevil title, not just uh, sharing that. Bat Girls number two from Jorge Corona and uh, Becky and all of them. Michael Conrad, uh, Good Asian number eight, Marvel Voices Heritage number one, Knighted number three from AWA, Maniac of New York, The Bronx is Burning number two, and Distorted number one from Scout. I will say I just ordered a book from Scout today that I'm very excited about. It's called Playthings, and it is all about a, a kid who they're like stuffed animals and like all of the like ice cream and like just all of like basically all the like fantastical things in their life come to life and it's a super scary horror book and as demonic toys was one of the most traumatizing movies of my childhood i cannot wait for this uh kids this horror book about a kid's childhood toys coming to life and that's coming out in a couple of of uh weeks uh chad if you didn't see the comment from bj he's got a few duplicates of early saga issues if you need some so you guys connect offline and see if y'all can make that happen i love that y'all are wonderful um so yeah that's what's going on i'm gonna give you a a bunch of stuff for hitting sitting uh, here and watching us for the last three hours uh, we've got a copy of Amazing Spider-Man number 83, which came out last week and features Ben Riley. Uh, Wolverine number 19, I honestly and truthfully just love this cover, which is why it's here, also came out last week. And Fantastic Four number one, this is a Marvel Tales collection of some of the best books of the Fantastic Four since we were just talking about that. <laughs> Surprise! We're going to give them to you if you can answer this question. According to Key Collector, so you probably all have this app by now, but according to Key Collector, what is the first ongoing comic to be based on a television series? Ongoing comic based on a TV series. And if you are Cameron, you cannot answer this question because you were here when I learned this information today. Um, but if you are watching, what is the, uh, according to Key Collector, what is the first ongoing comic book to be based on a TV show? If you know the answer, you get all three of these books. And honestly, while that Wolverine cover is super dope, that Fantastic Four with all those different issues is super, super cool. Uh, this is a massive Marvel prize pack and Fun marvel fans yes and if you uh, don't know the answer oh my god nigel of course of course it's a key collector question nigel got it immediately yes nigel twilight you zone. are getting this prize it was the twilight zone twilight zone uh was originally published by dell comics and then had an ongoing from gold key comics and it is the first ongoing comic book to feature a television show property i'm gonna so. guess mash 
But I don't even think there's a MASH comic There is not a MASH comic book, it's so... It's just Fantasyland. Yeah. Yeah, Nigel said I didn't use Key Collector, I swear. <laughs> well, uh, the That's question gave you the option to <coughs> use... I literally told yeah. you it was on Key Collector, so if you didn't, congratulations. He had that bookmark somewhere. Right? He was like, I'm already looking for this key. So I already <laughs> went through that section about TV shows. <laughs> I got one. Yeah. Right, I bought one today for... Uh, it's $350, so in a high grade, so, you for know. For Twilight Zone 1? For uh, Twilight Zone 1 from Gold Key is $350. I love those Gold Key issues. Dude, I love Gold Key comics. Yeah, oh gosh. They have some of the best. I love all the Disney ones. Uh, I mean, my magic of the spell comes in that time period, so you know. First appearance of uh, the Space Ghost. Yes, Nigel said a legit educated guess. I don't know mm -hmm. how to search for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure, Nigel. Uh, yeah, so congratulations, Nigel, and congratulations, Twilight Zone, because that is absolutely the thing that I think should be the first TV show to get an ongoing comic series. To be fair, um, and thank you everybody for watching we did two weeks of comics in the time that we do normally one week of comics so i'm proud of us congratulations to me and phil for uh doing that and thank you for congratulations to you for staying with us while we did it uh we will definitely see you this week in the store for new comics and if we don't we will see you next sunday night while we wind down your weekend at nine o'clock uh on sunday Deuces. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye.